Okay, let's call this meeting to order. Please rise. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Roll call. Mayor Spokato. Here. Mrs. Fascio. Here. Mr. Ranieri. Here. Mrs. Moore. Here. Mr. Fowler. Here. Mrs. Kelly. Here. Mr. Root. Here. Uh, Mr. Bayshore. Here. And Mr. Ransom. We have very good attendance. We do. We are very good attendance. Uh, public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given by the clerk in the following manner. One, posted on the bulletin board in the borough clerk's office on January 6, 2015, and two, emailed to the retrospect and courier post on January 6, 2015. Uh, this is our caucus meeting. Um, we'll go through. I had asked the, uh, the heads of the different departments to be here today. So did, did you get the email from Mr. Gomez? I did, did. and uh, that was fine. I did not hear anything. Yeah, the only thing he, he did call me and just to report what he was interested in is uh, if you remember at our last meeting, he was looking into getting quotes from a couple vendors and from our neighbors to clean the pump stations out on a more uh, regular, basis. regular basis. So he, he them or I, I think what he was doing was he was almost basically writing a bid. He was basically saying that uh, six of them need to be cleaned out uh, every every month or something like that. Or I mean, I don't know exactly what he's writing. But he, he, he's going to look at it, and the reason for this is obviously because of the, the uh, problems we've been having with some of the pump stations. And he did mitigate it because if you heard it was an alarm problem. And so, uh, you know, we do have the funds to clean it out if it's, a, if it's reasonable. Um, and then the only other thing that he had asked, Mr. Bayshore, is that um, uh, since we were applying for that um, infrastructure loan, he wanted to obviously, I said it was important for him to get with you guys and, and, and look at the, and that's what you wanted to do, right? Was to line certain streets. And he was saying that Oakland might be an excellent candidate for lining because the, the sewer line is so deep on Oakland, I guess it must go really low at, at that location. And so he felt that uh, lining that would maybe be better because I think when we thought we were tearing the whole road up, it might be easy just to tear up the, um, but he said it's so deep that it might be easier to line it. He says it's as deep as Schistler at that location. Yeah. So if everyone's aware, we're trying to. You know what you're going to get into once you get down there. And well, you're better doing that before you pay. You know, well, if there is anything we have to dig up, I guess that that's yeah. Because uh, we can have a camera go down through there and then look at it before we do it. Because I'm still in the impression our goal is to get Oakland Avenue done Absolutely. this year, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, right. So I'll jump on the agenda. If anybody does show up, we'll let them talk. I think the, the chief of police was going to stop by. Uh, two premium sheets up to the bow. Obviously, that means we're getting money. CAP or COLA ordinance, that is what we do every year, which allows us to exceed what the law says we're allowed to exceed. If there's any questions on that, you have to ask Mr. Wright. Uh, clothing bid approval. Is there? I have one that Keith has okay, and it is for uh, Bridge Deli has a uh, clothing bid. Do we have an application that we can look at? Oh, yeah. You want to see the application? We're not going to vote on it tonight, correct? No, we're going to vote on it on Tuesday. Um, but everything went through. All clothing bins come in front of council. Just let you know now. Good. They, you know, it might be a little extreme, but I think it's, no, it's a way to control it. Well, didn't we really bring that up before, that it was a nuisance where it was? Well, that's why uh, uh, Keith should have uh, made sure that the location was going to work. Here's all the uh, paperwork that I have, the emails that I sent. It's something. like right in the residential part of it. That's the thing that bothers yeah. me about that thing. That's just me speaking as a resident. Because it sits on the residential side. She's got the side on the other side of the building that she could put it so that it would sit facing more towards the Let's see if there's a... Uh, instead of sitting where it's So did the ordinance say that, 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 that was not permitted? Was the dip? No. Well, her, it's so small. Well, it's on the side of the building. Yeah. Side of the parking lot. It's on the side. Well, here's what they said. It's a $25 check. It's uh, New Jersey retired police officers. Uh, the zoning officers' comments below. Ken and Len looked at this. Uh, it says how the clothing will be distributed. The only thing I don't see is any, any, you know, where, where it's going to be located. That's the only thing I would say. I'm agreeing. With, I agree with you that that's, it should just be relocated from where it is. I don't know if it said in the ordinance that you had, it had to be in a specific spot 
on the property. Do I have our purpose in the ordinance? All right, well, if they don't want to listen to us, then we deny it. I think it's a good point. Why don't we, do you mind? Yeah, we don't want to listen to where we want, then we deny it. Not our key. Like, that was part of the thing that we had originally talked about with the ordinance. Location. To be not only location, one of the specific sites, piece of property. Like, let's not have every little Tom, Dick, and Harry popping up one of these things. It needs to be on a lot. X amount. I mean, I don't know if we can say square footage. <coughs> well, I think the ordinance needs to be this big in order to justify having one. I'm not opposed to her having it. I just agree that it's sitting on the side, like, not that the houses are all perfect on that street, but it's sitting on the side where every resident has to see it. Much like the one I feel in Charlie's is the same way. Charlie's has all of that parking lot to put them, and yet they're sitting right on the driveway access across from the residential properties. I think what this ordinance allows us to do is review each application. So what Mike says, if we don't feel it's in the right spot, we can deny it. Or at least, or at least suggest that it's moved to a, 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 I don't think we need to have to worry about the size of the lot as much as if we feel that the lot's too small, then the lot's too small. I mean, the acne might not be good enough, and why would, you know, because just where they want to put it. So I think the only problem I have with that application is maybe, so would you mind talking to Keith and no, make a recommendation to council? That's fine. I'll talk to Keith. Because if you're talk to him, so the whole thing started. Yeah. But I mean, we can just deny it if it's, if it's not. Uh, yeah. I'm not in favor of doing that to every single person. If she's filling out the application, willing to pay whatever it is. What's well, a 25 hour application? That's it. And I'm, if she's willing to do it, because I don't think any organization else. pays it, not her. Yeah, it came from the retired police officer. Yeah, but that wasn't who that original was. That bins, I don't think that bin was always retired. Well, we can make a copy of that application. Yeah, I'll find out. Because I think the bin belonged to somebody else originally. It was yeah, a different changed. company, and she changed it. Well, one thing that uh, Keith's been talking about, and, and something when we're passing these ordinances, there's there's stuff that has to be at, there's there's this all the stuff that has to be added to it. Like for example, the application needs to be when we're passing an ordinance, there's no application that goes with it. So for example, we need to modify the application that says please submit a, a plot plan so we can see where the right. where the right. where it is. I don't think it needs to be in the ordinance. It could just be part of the application okay. process. Uh, now I think he's added a lot of comments to this one, correct? Correct. He changed. Uh, he had to submit uh, different documents. But I don't think anywhere in the ordinance does it state. Well, I think the ordinance should allow. It has to be in a certain spot, so that's. Uh, well, it doesn't need to be in the ordinance. It's up to us. So if we don't like where it's at, we just okay, deny it. Yeah. But we just need to, I think the application can ask for that, that right. a plot plan location. or a location. Okay, that's fine. Because then we could have easily looked at it. Okay. Uh, three bingo licenses for Holy Child Parish. That should be no problem. Uh, John Pettis' proposal for 625 for the planning board issue. Uh, what happened, and just to make everybody aware of this, uh, during the planning board uh, meetings, we've had uh, a gentleman uh, bring to the attention to the planning board that uh, an approved site plan back in the 80s has deteriorated to a point where it has become a nuisance. Mr. Knight went to site, or at least investigate. When he investigated, he could tell that there was something wrong. But without the site plan, there was no way to know what part had deteriorated. He had requested that the planning board had to find that original application, that original approval. He was not able to be found. He could not find other than some bits and pieces. John, you were there in case I'm saying anything wrong. No, that's accurate. Yeah. And then once the, um, then it was, it was asked if the engineer, the planning board's engineer, would go out and look at it and determine what was deficient so that Mr. Knight could potentially cite the person. There was a cost to send somebody out. I, I, I spoke to, to, to Mr. Wright in regards to cost for the planning board. The planning board has a nominal budget. A small budget basically covers their, 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 their cost. Most of the time, any applications are paid by the applicant. So if you want to build something in the of me, you put in escrow fees, and the escrow fees cover the engineers for doing all this stuff. What's going on here is we, what we need to do, is this what you're asking for? Can we approve this 625? Or didn't we already pretty much this rumors? That was Did Keith, wasn't, wasn't Keith able to look at it? He was going to try to do it himself. We don't need to approve this. This is just for now. This is just for discussion. What's happening is the borough council is paying the planning board's bill through their account to, 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 to investigate this problem. The engineer went out there, saw that the wall was falling down, and said it has to be repaired. It's eroding and things like that. This is on Schubert Avenue. This is, this is uh, about the three or four houses in from the uh, 
Cross from Heritage, pretty much. Cross from Schubert Avenue. <coughs> What's your neighbor? It's a neighbor dispute. Back to this property. property. Very back to this property. 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 It's maintained. Yeah. Yeah. So there's maintenance issues, things like that. So basically, just to keep everybody aware, this has been approved at 625. The engineer went out there. So what's happening is the individual will be cited. Hopefully, he comes in front of the board and, and, and says, I will remedy this problem or something to that effect. Uh, or, like I said, worst case scenario, he comes in front of our judge, and the judge decides if, if there's a, a need to, to, to fix it. You've got one neighbor fighting another neighbor, um, but his, his application did say he was supposed to have a retaining wall, and the retaining wall has, has uh, collapsed. <coughs> home businesses. Has everybody had a chance to review the home business ordinance? Applications aren't ready. Well, the ordinance hasn't been passed. Had the ordinance no, hasn't been passed. Did everybody get a copy of it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What the planning board did was there's there's been once again issues of how far can a home business be before it belongs in a commercial business. Obviously, we have commercial zones throughout the town. Blackbird's Pike, Clones Bridge Road, parts, parts of Clones Bridge Road, parts of Esham Road, um, parts of Ninth Avenue, or commercial, commercial districts. We also define office districts. We also define industrial districts. This is not actually a zoning issue in the sense that it's land use. This is more of a borough ordinance <coughs> that um, basically allows home based businesses, if you got a chance to read this, the, the, the first two lines really much sum it up. Home-based businesses shall be permitted in all residential districts. But this is where we, we try to set as a minimum limitation. The gross area to put to a home-based business shall not exceed 250 square feet or 10% of the total gross area of the property um, or the lesser of that. So meaning that someone can have a home-based business and then take the whole entire house and make it a business. But if 250 square feet or 10% it's a small home can, can happen. It limits a little bit about how many patrons can come in. Obviously, you don't want to have something and things like that. So to give some credit to the planning board, they, they did a little, lot of work on this. They compared it to what was, uh, what was allowed in other areas, but with a lot of consideration about running need and, and you know, the type of people who are you know, running small businesses. And our homes are close together, too. Yeah, yeah. so there's yeah. consideration about parking and stuff like that. But let's make it clear. If, for some reason, somebody did not uh, fit into these 15 criteria for some reason. They're always welcome to go get a go get a, a variance for it. And you're talking about legal home businesses. Well, we don't we don't define what's allowed in a home business. You know, first of all, you can't do anything that's illegal. Well, no, we define it. Prohibited businesses. Auto repair is not allowed in someone's house. Rental, retail or wholesale sales of goods, equipment, chapels, fixtures, materials. A restaurant or food distribution. Those are things that are not allowed. These are not allowed. Tattoo or piercing. Psychic, read, psychic readings, massage parlors, fire on oh, repair. Oh, darn. No psychic fire psychic on repair. readings. <laughs> not allowed. Massage, massage parlor right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. So nothing like pull my tables on eBay. Yeah. Uh, it talks about that, they, that their trash has to be able to fit in their trash cans, that they can't be generating a lot of trash. There's really no outside storage. But once again, uh, I'll, I'll be, you know, we have a member on our planning board who has a homemade business that does not fit this criteria. He will have to go get a variance. But, the, but the, he did not object to it because his property was so large right. that you can't even see where his four trucks are parked. You know, he's got a storage yeah. building, but it doesn't matter. It's so far away, it would be a very low yeah. threshold to, uh, to allow that. Um, you know, sure. Are you referring to somebody whose yeah. customers comes and knocks on the door? Or are you referring to me who does making these up, does tax returns? Yes. You and I use my address on my. No, typically the home, how we're defining a home-based business is someone who has part of their business they're running and running business at. So if you're someone who well, look at Bob Del Sordo. Well, he's on the commercial property. Oh, it's office, exactly. it's, uh, that, that's actually all right. He's, a, he's oh, already he's zoned. Off, zoned off. These are people in residential zones. Oh. So, for example, uh, like my, my company. I'm, okay. I've got a desk in my basement. He's got a desk in his basement. So, all it's Mike would have to do. Of my house. All Mike would have to do is pay a uh, Because he has a desk in his house? He doesn't have to register, but here's the problem. If he gets complained upon, he's, he's now subject to our, our laws, and he'd be fine. Up to twenty-five. How much is the fine? Now that you told me. For what? Barrel ordinance. Five hundred dollars. 
So the idea is you pay a one-time $50 fee. You have a piece of paper that says, I'm allowed to be an accountant. I'm allowed to be an engineer. I can work in my office as an engineer. But let's define a business, guys. If, if someone is just you have nobody coming to your house. Okay. That's different. What about women who brought Avon out of their house? Not excluded. Not okay, so I do know people that run Avon out of their home. Family daycares are allowed. They're allowed by How state long? state law. There it is. Family That's daycare right. homes are permitted as per provision. They're allowed, but they have to apply for the license. The state of New Jersey oh, regulates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The state of New Jersey regulates. You have to register That's with them. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's a good ordinance. I don't think it's it's too obtrusive. I think the reason that this came about was you have it, it is a line. It's yeah. tough to draw a line. But this line is. Very clearly out of their home. Let's make this clear. The only enforcement we have is if somebody complains. Exactly. And, and the idea here is, is that this protects people who are doing things legitimately. And if some, I'm, let, let's talk about the police are here this evening. Yes, Do you sure. remember yes, the sure. gentleman that was running a car repair across yeah. from Schubert Avenue? Yeah. Do you want to let everybody on council know? Yes. <clears throat> this is what brought this up. So we, had a, uh, we had a small group of uh, young uh, adults running, it was called Four Boys Auto Repair, and they had numerous cars in and out all hours of night. Actually, we actually found a stolen car out in the street that fell over. Um, we had, had numerous cars, and it caused a lot of problems within the borough itself. The neighbors were being terrorized, and we made several arrests out there, and they later left. But now let's there was please. nothing for us to prosecute them. So what we did in the police department, I was captain, I contacted the Division of uh, Taxation from the state of Jersey, sent them their web page that they had, and then sent them after them saying they are running a home-based business, are they paying taxes? Do they have a tax ID number? Those people are going there and they're paying to get the cars fixed. And the Division of Taxation went out there. Yeah. And so that's one of the bad, the bad examples. That we had an example of the same thing where someone was repairing a car. He actually came in front of the planning board, mm -hmm. I'm sure, and he was allowed to do it because he wasn't necessarily running a business in the sense he was just fixing cars up every once in a while, but it wasn't a permitted use. The, the zoning board granted him a variance to he allow him to do that. Yes, he did come in front of the board and got approved to do that. Do you remember that? I don't think he knows that. He was here. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? He was here. He was given mm -hmm. a uh, hardship. Because I guess he bought the he house. He built the garage. He bought the house with the garage already built, and he did additions, and he's yeah. not allowed to yeah, charge no. anybody. But so what this will do, Bob? Well, this will allow him not to even have to come in front of the planning board. Yeah, because it it's an expense to come in front of the planning board. So this way, for a fifty-dollar application fee, the zoning officer will simply say, you know, you're not. It's not the whole house. It's not excessive. You don't have enough. Now, for example, if somebody has five or six trucks, but he can, has every right to come in front of this. Uh, Planning board and get a, get, a, get a waiver from. I, I think if everyone looks at this, I'd like to see us at least. Uh, I'd like to introduce it on uh, next month's meeting. If there's any changes, we have every every ability to change it. Do first reading, move on it. It'll make everybody happy. Excuse me, Ben. Uh, yeah. Mr. Mayor, one of the things if sometimes people do not cooperate, what is the authority of Mr. Knight? And order police department and order court. If someone knocks on the door and says, "I don't know what you're talking about," and slams the door in your face. Well, it's, it's an ordinance, it's a borough ordinance, subject to all borough ordinances. You can cite them uh, or whatever. Breaking I'm order. just saying is that what? 265. But if the gentleman says, I don't know what we're talking about, shuts the door in your face. Well, because, you know, because there'll be a complaint filed and we'd have to investigate that complaint. Okay. But I'm saying that when you're investigating the complaint, guys, well, I think you're just going to be able to watch and see. Uh, okay. I just, I just want to know now. how further are we going to. I think, it, I think, once again, if it's a complaint-driven ordinance right. where if someone is, is, is uh, you know, selling something on eBay and it's not a problem, I don't think you're any complaints. When the tractor trailers show up, I think that's going to be obvious that there's, there's a problem. Okay. You know. I don't see an application with this ordinance. Uh, well, we'll have to create one. That, that's the argument that, that you know, the clerk has made very clear. We have to create it after the fact. <coughs> 
it has to comply with whatever. Yeah, the ordinance, the once we pass an ordinance, we have to create an application mm -hmm. that matches it. So, for example, the application would probably require somebody to show a small site plan and say, look, it's a <coughs> downstairs basement, you know, that I'm, I'm using and things like that. Um, so, we'll have to, we'll have to. This is not going to be a perfect science. Yeah. It's not. No, it's not. It's not. Keep it simple. Yeah, it's keep it simple. Keep it simple, a little application. Sure. So, that takes care of that, hopefully. Mercantile license. This is a class example of what happened five, four years ago, five years ago. Back five years ago, it was made clear that even though we have a zoning ordinance that requires people to come in and get a zoning application before they build or do any work in the town, one of the things it doesn't necessarily require is somebody who's opening a business in town to come in and notify the town that the business is being opened. So what a mercantile license does, I know it sounds like we're doing a lot of regulations, but we are just catching up. What a mercantile license is very similar to the home business license. The idea is that all the businesses in town would submit to the town what's going on at that piece of property. They would submit the name, the address of who's the owner, the property owner, who the contact people are. This would be distributed to the police department. Do you guys have any mechanism at this time to, to have all the businesses? Yes, we do. Through the fire department? No, we have a list of all the businesses in town in our uh, in-house uh, computer system with the emergency contact names and numbers. How do you get that information? Well, when we see a business open up, we usually send an officer out there and, you know, say hello and talk to them and, you know, who do we call, what's your alarm company, and that's how we do it. Okay. Well, what this would do is this would formalize this a little bit more so that it would be up to date and current. Uh, very typical in most municipalities, it's a nominal fee to just simply update it. You know, for example, in, in my own personal experience in Gloucester Township, I put myself, my father, and, and whoever my manager, their phone number, so if there's, any, if there's something that goes on, they have the ability to contact me. The police are able to contact me. I actually also, it's a mechanism to give a website, or excuse me, an email address. So what the police department in Gloucester Township did is they use that to also uh, develop a database of email to contact the business owners to let them know things. I will say it was so terrible I had to be taken off the list. Because every five minutes, Gloucester Township was telling me what's going on. And they were sending me videos to say, you know this guy. Because he just uh, uh, stole something. Oh, we get that sometimes. Yeah, you get that? But they, but they do solve a lot of crimes. They do yeah. solve a lot of crimes by doing that. I, I agree. But once again, it was my decision that I couldn't look at it all the time. Um, they do have thresholds of when they, they, they communicate to you. So back in 2009, the council passed this ordinance. And it, it, it basically allow for uh, a mercantile license. Joyce, do you want to elaborate, elaborate, be more elaborate on what went wrong with it back in 2009? I don't, I don't remember, but whatever it was that we created, again, we, we, passed, a, we passed an ordinance that, mm -hmm. and didn't look at all the particulars within it about how the money was going to be, was going to be collected, um, how, uh, who was going to approve this, what you actually wanted, with the information that you wanted. Uh, we tried to amend it in, uh, what was this, last year? Yeah, this council last year tried to amend it. Correct. And then there was ran into another problem. Depart yeah. Department yeah. issues. Who was going to, if the fire approves, if the fire marshal approves it, then uh, it moves on to the code enforcement. Well, the code enforcement might say no. How do we resolve all of this? And what? I mean, maybe you don't even want it to go that far. I believe the Western Township's application was very elaborate in what they asked next. You gave me that last year. It is very loud. I tried to get some more simple applications that I sent out. Mm -hmm. I particularly liked uh, the ones that were one page. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if, I don't know how much information you want. That's what you have to decide. You know, what this, once again, what this is supposed to do is two things. It's supposed to create a database of who's, who's in that property on a yearly basis, who's in and out of there, and things like that. It really starts, it's really a more of a police issue, and somewhat of a fire and issue, a and a zoning issue. It's really not a, a, a council issue. We, we don't, you know, all we're trying to say is that, so who should drift that up? Well, what happened originally is, is, the, is the construction official, the zoning office, they started looking at it and saw all the holes in the ordinance. Uh, what, what Joyce is, what, what she was doing this year, when she was codifying the ordinances at the end of the year, she noticed that we introduced it and never finalized this ordinance. So, what we need to do is, I think we ought to ask our, our code enforcement zoning officer to review this, and our 
maybe our police department to at least say what information they'd like to get. And for the fire and, the and they have the fire, and I think Mr. Wright would maybe agree, and the clerk would say maybe we should ask for email and things like that. So we have a little way to communicate with people and come up, amend the ordinance, and come up with an application that. that yeah, fits. so I was just going to say there are some, in being in a small town that we do, the 2.2 square miles, what we're going to ask is the police and the fire are going to ask is, do you have any hazardous chemicals stored in your area? Mm -hmm. And I know Mr. Wright would probably agree with me. Mount Laurel years ago had a large fire of a chemical company, and three firemen later died of cancer. Sometimes they teach you in uh, ICS school, sometimes it's better to let it burn, let it go, than put it out and put the people at risk. So we need to know that if it's like Scott's lawn, what fertilizer do they have stored down there? Or if it's a welding company, or it's an auto shop. Well, some of that actually is covered by the fire inspectors. Right, but so, we don't have that database. I understand what you're saying. You want to have the database right there in front of you in case we have to do a mass evacuation. If, let's say, God forbid, Scott's catches on fire, we have to evacuate people from Central, 11th, 10th, and 9th. We have to evacuate them due, due to the smoke being blown in a certain area, or does Barrington need to be notified? Well, the fire, just once again, an example of fire, any of those are what they're considered are life, life hazard uses. Yes. That's a separate application. Once again, my business has it. I have, uh, I store chemicals to do painting. So I pay a separate fee to the state of New Jersey, and I'm listed so that Glendora Fire Department knows right. that. But, but once again, this would be a simple application. Do you have any hazards in the property? Yeah, and then they would at least notify the police and the fire. Yeah, well, list what hazards and chemicals would you have? I don't know if that was on any of the application no, choice. No, it's not on any of them because that's covered under what Fred. That should be covered under the fire. Fred. Oh, well, that's right to know. That's also right to know. Yes, but wouldn't it be more efficient? So well, if we could combine system? everything, I, I agree. I agree, Paul. Yeah. So at least the council understands that we're going to send this back to our. Our code enforcement zoning officer will allow the police and the fire department to look at it. I think the mechanism will be to go probably to the construction office. I think when we first wrote the ordinance, it was supposed to come to Joyce as the clerk. I the clerk, the question. she doesn't understand if it's permitted use, if it's, uh, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. So all it means is that, that the construction office will simply collect this application and it'll go through the few signatures and then that data will be stored. And then the only thing we might want to continue is, and I noticed from the other towns, is the first year is an application to review it, a reinspection fee, and then your subsequent year is just, has anything changed? For example, in Gloucester Township, they've become so computerized, they send me a form, I don't have to fill anything out, I just have to sign it. I only have to make changes, like my driver's license. You know, you can just change if there's anything to change. So it's not a means to collect any, you know, revenue, but it's only to cover the cost of maybe that, yeah, that one very, time. I think that application is very inexpensive, isn't it? For the well, the way we did it was $50. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. And, uh, it was not a. Well, I will say, Gloucester is only twenty-five, uh, so it is a little less than us. But is there a why I But in Lindenwald, it's one hundred. Oh. And in Merchantville, fifty dollars is. I think we we thought about it last night, and that's yeah. where we came up. Remember fighting about it last yeah. night? Yeah. So we'll leave that alone and move on with that. Who's running with it? Who's running with it? <laughs> We're going to allow the clerk and the construction <laughs> office to get it to get it done. <laughs> But I think what, what Joyce's point was is that we introduced something and we didn't finish it. Yeah. And we, you know, we need to, to amend it. You got so many holes in it. Uh, so if you read the email from Joyce, you know, we introduced and tried to amend it after. So we'll, we'll, we'll try to get this done. Reserve <coughs> transfers, do you want to explain that, Mr. Wright? Yeah. Uh, very quickly, uh, we have two open budget years. So you always have your current year and your prior year. Um, our system is rolled over, so now we have year four and year five. Um, as the bills come in, uh, you may look at your accounts and say, okay, well, we're going to be a little bit more there. So basically, you know, we're only allowed to use year four now for year four bills. So if something came in higher than expected uh, for utility or something of that nature, then we move money around. So um, I have a copy for everybody. Do we have to have a vote on this tonight, or is this if, if I could request to make it easier for us if you could vote on the plan and you can just get posted and take care of everything. But we can wait if it's a problem. It's the same. Thank you. So you're taking from the 
finance department, salary and wage, and you're moving it to legal services, operating expense, sanitation operating expense, EMS operating expense, and telephone operating expense. So $12,500. Motion to approve. I so I so move. I'll second that motion. Any discussion? Any question? Uh, roll call. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Ranier. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mr. Fowler. Yes. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Uh, Mr. Root. Yes. Six seconds. Mm -hmm. Please. What's the uh, resolution number on? I have no idea. Oh, okay. I don't have any resolutions on. Here. Okay, you want to do the next one? Uh, Can we make a note that it has to get assigned a uh, resolution? It'll show up, I guess, on our phone. Right, Joyce, you'll, you'll point yeah, and put it on I'll our account. I, okay. I think she'll does the council meeting. She'll put it in the next one. You want to talk? The two sewer account adjustments, like, Joyce, is that anything? Oh, I missed the emergency temporary appropriations. That's, well, that's a discussion item, but for the next, that one we don't need tonight. Um, we have a couple of grants that we would like to insert in your budget. There was one line item where I think we might need it to be good, so there might be a few items on the agenda. Clean um, communities grant. So these are monies we received we need to put into our yeah. current or the current well, it'll, it'll be in it'll be in the 2015 budget document, but until it's approved, we need to even the grants in certain temporary budget. So basically we can't spend money unless we have a line item appropriation or a trust fund set up to spend. So basically, we can't spend, even though it's a grant account, unless we put it on the books, we can't spend it. Mm -hmm. And yes, we already have to check. So, so we have to check. So yes. We'll do that at the council meeting? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Um, everybody understand that? Yep, 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 yep. Two sewer account adjustments. Sure, so just a change in um, the commercial properties that have changed. Uh, uh, when you sell it, so we have to adjust the sewer account. You know, uh, just to uh, digress slightly with this, I, I wish this was one time uh, John was here a little bit. I actually got a complaint about our sewer bill in the sense that uh, our current ordinance, uh, how it's defined for a business is every single business that's in the building gets charged a sewer bill. Is everybody aware of this? So if you had, say this was a, a building that was one business, we would charge one sewer bill for it based on the amount of employees and the square footage. You're familiar with this at all? Um, but if we were to separate it, put a dividing wall down, down the middle and had two businesses, then you would separate it and say, okay, now it's two sewer bills because you've got this and it falls there. Uh, did we run into that problem with the resident on the pipe? That we was did. We, we ran into it and it was brought to my attention. The guy who cleaned the Harry Williams building, his father owns that building in town. And he uh, mentioned it to me and said, uh, whatever this building is, uh, that, 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 that is. Like, it's down past where five and ten used to be. It's in that little strip there. Yeah, service master, they're out of Belmar. They came and they cleaned yes, the floor. Yes. The father owns a building in town. And right what, what he does is. Like sec, uh, what is that? First, second Avenue. Second Avenue down towards where Thatcher's is. It's in that strip. Yeah, so I think what the ordinance does is it doesn't distinguish between an office. In this particular case, right. I think it's an office building. And he basically has like. Four desks with be like Mike Root's business, Bob's business. You know what I mean? Our four businesses sitting there, and we're charging these tickets for businesses. It's the same you see what I'm saying? And he thought that that was a little unfair. And I just want to bring this up because uh, you know these are the kind of things that we have to look at every once in a while. I'll take a look at it. Maybe we just need to say that offices are treated maybe more by square footage and the amount of people as opposed to the amount of businesses. Because I don't know if everybody's been noticing that's been an ongoing thing. Like lawyers do it a lot. Where they'll have a common secretary, and they'll have you know seven or ten different lawyers in a, in a room. And they're all different businesses. In the borough form of uh, uh, bills, we would charge every lawyer as if it was a separate, a separate business in there. I think that's something we should maybe, maybe. Well, how would you determine? The way I think it should be done is typically when you're doing any kind of uh, building, you would talk about square footage and the amount of use that's and going on in the business. What's the standard fee? standard fee varies. What are other towns do? I don't know, but let's look at Belmar. What, what typically what everybody, everybody can pay a certain flat fee just to have that usage, and then if there's an additional fee, more on it. Well, the only thing I can say is is that I only know my own experience. Sometimes my building is based on the square footage and the amount of employees. It's real simple. I think we need to maybe look at that instead of how many businesses there are. 
You know, what is, the, what is the use? When it came up the first time, I think it was just because, I hate to say the old adage of, well, that's always how it's been done. Because what? I think that's what John's answer was. I mean, nothing against John. John was just like, that's what it's always it's been, been. It's been that way a long time. It's always been that way. But I think what you're having here is you may be having more right. people subdivide. I agree. I think that, it. well, let's look into what other yeah. uh, neighbors are doing. Okay. So I'll, I'll ask John to look at it. Yeah, absolutely. And definitely, I think we should know how many it impacts. I mean, if there's 15 businesses and it doesn't have a large financial... I don't think, it, in fact, you know, I mean, I think it's, it's only really an office district problem. I right. think it's a... We're right. treating right. office it districts... Hell, it was places along the pike. The pike because it was also an issue that... Wasn't it something with, like, the front of the building was, like, an office, and then there was something in the back, but then there was the apartment upstairs, and it was being divided into, like, a bunch more than it should have been. It was something yeah. weird like that. There, there was an apartment, but then there was a business, and then there was a use of Each use part of the has property. a different... Yes, uh, everything you know, you don't know the sewer yeah. bill. Each use where we're, we're charging for right. so for a restaurant is based on a restaurant and how many seats. Yes. It should be minimal max or minimal tonight. Minimal yes. Minimal max. But I think what's happening is it's just, you know, right. if it's an extra person, we should just charge the $25 right. per sheet fee or something. Like right. That. right. Instead of a whole other business because one guy is sitting down. Yeah. Right there. Um, direct deposit ordinance. Mr. Wright, you want to elaborate this? Council, allow this to be tabled a little bit against what I wanted to do. But, uh, Actually, uh, I think I'm going to start off by pitching it back to Joyce because she ran the numbers. Do you, uh, don't do that. Why am I pitching it back? What do you want me to tell I, 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 I mentioned this previously, and uh, I'll say it again, that basically in order for us to, yeah. to pass this ordinance, we are required to be oh, paperless ourselves. So we have to send out W-2s, which we just finished yesterday. Um, and we have to send W-2s and have pay stubs available to the employees online. Now, this is going to be challenging, aside from the cost factor, because right now uh, there's constantly problems with people saying that they think that their pension accounts are wrong when they're not. And every single person in the state of New Jersey who has a pension has the ability to go online through MBOSS, which is what the system's called, and look it up. And it's been in existence for about nine or 10 years. So anybody that's not an employee that was hired last week should monitor. They used to send out statements in the mail once a year, and now they don't do that anymore. You have to go online and, and look it up. So basically, and that's like a, an occasional pension question. So now what's going to happen is that every time an employee wants to see their pay stub, they're going to have to log on to our system, which may not be a bad process. It's just a process. And you know, we know from trying to contact people as of late that not everybody is, is tech savvy. So it, it does create some issues, uh, you know, which can be resolved by having a terminal available in each department. So that if you don't have a computer, then you can look it up in the department. I mean, so there, there's ways around all the problems. I think that's over. Yeah. 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 No, they, so they will. My own experience from a company that I worked for that had everything was online at the end of the year. And then, no, 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 you printed it off. Well, I think that the, the state, uh, we have to be paper to do this. With the exception. Because it was, so, it, it was difficult. There were a lot of people that were older that weren't very computer savvy, but correct. eventually it just worked. It itself works its way. Right. It it's it's really easy to do, but it's just, it's you need, but everyone needs to know that. Because so. you didn't need to. You could go on and view it. You didn't have to print it. because. Yeah, let's make it clear first. Uh, obviously, the, the intent of the, of the state is to become paperless, which is better for all of us, the savings and stuff like that. And the simple fact that it is uh, difficult to get paychecks to different people who show up at different times and things like that. So there's a logistical reason that I think the finance department wants to, at least last year, I, my personal opinion, I wanted to do this on July when, when the law became first. July 1st. And I did find out that some of the other towns have already done this. Uh, uh, Waterford Township, went on July 1, they, all their employees, regardless of their, their stature, they get direct deposit. So Mr. Wright pointed out the law does allow for certain exception, exceptions. So for example, if we have a one-time check, we don't have to force the person to do direct deposit. When's well, Waterford? No, everybody has to get the information and it's a direct deposit. There is a cost. There is an initial setup fee of $5,000, and then there's a yearly fee of Usually runs, runs around 25 bucks. Yeah. yeah. So, now, is it every two weeks or every We week? pay every two weeks. We have approximately 100 and, uh, 130 yeah. paychecks yeah. every two weeks. How many paychecks? We have 130. We have 139 paychecks. 
I think it's a great movie. Collingswood did it. There's quite a few towns. It's a it's a green initiative. It's an efficiency initiative. It eliminates a lot of problems. Uh, the only thing that we have to talk about is the exception. I, I think that we can very simply have an ordinance, a very one-page ordinance that says all of our employees must sign a direct deposit. Uh, you know what I mean? Immediately. And I say you can leave it up to the administrator to decide if he wants to write a check to someone. Because my personal opinion is if we've got a clean communities coordinator that we have to reimburse or, or, or write a check for something or a stipend is given to some person, we just write a check. I don't know why the other towns are being so rigid. Well, I understand why, because it's a pain. Collingswood makes the person come in front of the entire council and explain why they should get a check instead of direct deposit. It might be a, a little no, bit. I think that if I could say from the administrative side, I think the purpose of that is so that people don't just to discourage. Work, How about to discourage? You don't get 139 requests that now even if you deny them all, you still have to respond to 139 requests. So if you have to go before a council and explain your reason, then somebody probably is going to have a really good reason rather than just putting it so in. So if we go along with this next year when the W2s come out, we go online and pick up, we get our own. Yeah, right. Well, that's cool. You have a login, password, login, login, print it out. How do we get the login? I personally login? shred all the ones that are in the We would have to. Yeah. We would have to put that out. We don't have the answers to that. So, but. And not to say we're going to not help people do this, but I, you know, to argue that the, the, the borough is in tech savvy, I think this is our obligation to make them yeah. more tech savvy. Right? It's a good step in the right direction. I love right. it. I, I, I also yeah. think that it. it has so we have to appropriate this money, too, though. How do you want to move forward with this? Oh, the $5,000? The reason is, is that these government programs, we, we have, we use Edmonds, is the name of the manufacturer that does these, the software device. So it's $5,000 you're talking about? It's a $5,000 one time fee and then there's yearly maintenance. Um, these, these, they're expensive. I, I know it's your son, the fact that we've gone one direction with a certain manufacturer, and every time we want to do something, it costs a lot of money. Joyce, what was the other program you wanted? 25,000 years. It's, I was going to call for a mercantile license to see if that was a standalone module to try to see if that's something. See, the disadvantage so is, that. as a small municipality, we get a disadvantage because think about that, $5,000 for Gloucester Township is nothing. nothing. $5,000 for a quantity to buy yeah, the software yeah, is a disadvantage. Yeah. Well, they, they, they actually, the pricing, the pricing for the, the system itself is based on your dollars. Yeah. So oh, it is based on a, a so quantity. So that, they they actually factored that in. So yeah. it's your dollars. But the still a bond of nine number. Yeah. And then Correct. They, they, and you also have to factor in that we probably spend more about 30 to 40 percent of our budget on the software. So it's not just the system. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. And you also have to factor in that we probably spend about 12 to 1500 hours a year on checks. So. Checks, postage, envelopes, right. signatures, Seek. wear and tear. Really good. Now. I mean, the returns, <laughs> it's, it might be a break even. You're not going to have a yeah. savings. Phone calls. But efficiency wise, I do believe that the module has other features that would, it, it's more than just. You have looked at the. There, there's another portion of it you can put that's larger cost. Say, there's an HR program. You actually can uh, schedule time off, put in your vacation time, and this is uh, very, uh, well, it is the future, but maybe maybe yeah, steps. Yeah, maybe steps, maybe steps right. 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 You know, don't get me wrong. I I, I agree. If, if, if I could convince everybody right now to say do it, I would do it. The problem is, I need management to agree with it, and that's our. Well, get on line with the checks, and then research. Someone research what it can do for some future. Yes. Yeah. So we know. It's not we do the checks first. The far back. Part. No. Just to, to use a, a couple of examples that, you know, for, for taxes. Yes. And again, it's it's not apples to apples, but it, it shows how you know, paying the five thousand dollars on the tax side helps because in the past we would have to enter every single transaction. Now they wire a million dollars into our bank account, the lien holders or the mortgage companies. And Joyce gets an email file and she uploads it in two minutes. We posted, out, uh, we've posted uh, you know, 20 hours worth of work. So, I mean, so sometimes, you know, there is investment in the system as a whole. Yes. So. Now, it's a simple fact that these, these technology investments have made us much more productive. Joyce would have needed a staff. How much to put to post for? Oh, this is why our staff is able to be as small as it is right now. Yeah. Because of the because technology, of the advances in uh, software yeah. that enables us right. to post, instead of posting $4 million a quarter, we might only post now uh, a million eight. The rest of it is done uh, Electronic. electronically. Yeah. So it's definitely the way to go. I mean, do you need an appropriation from council to spend the five thousand dollars? Do we get the ordinance in place first? What's the logistics of this? Uh, I think we just wanted to 
discuss if you like. You keep kicking it. Wow. Let's tell them what he needs. Give him what he needs. If you want to do an authorization, you can do, authorize the administrator to. But he's paranoid about the papers. He's got to get. It is more work. It is getting set up. We're getting everybody's got to give us all their checking accounts, right? Now, you know. Can we just put a thing on? I know our chief under the bus. Our chief, he gets a check. Yeah, I, we can. I, he's old school. I like it. He's old school. He goes to the bank. <laughs> so you're talking two readings in 20 days. Yeah, so. Bill time, because you got to help him carry that. <laughs> yeah, it's happening. We, can, we can do first reading on Tuesday night. It's not worth every dollar. Okay. And if we run into a hiccup, we can request a postponement from the second reading. Right. So this way, okay. it, so it becomes it real. <laughs> and let's decide. You know, I personally think that it might not be a bad idea that we mimic the ordinance from Congress with it says. This would put a little more pressure on it. Instead of him getting 139 waiver requests, maybe we have to bring him in front of council if they want to ask for a waiver yeah. uh, to uh, not do the direct deposit. That's probably a good idea. We have to have something. Oh, I say yes. They will not. Why raise it's very hard will. to say, it, you know. What's everyone's opinion on that? I think that's too much. I think that's a better argument to say. Change is not easy. It's adapt or die. Change it. Just do it. Just do it. I agree. You make the rule, just do it. Do it. Okay. So let's and don't give them the option at all. That's well, we you know because remember, if I have water to run, is no option. If I have to run fifteen, I, I agree with that. Yeah. No option. I have to run one hundred and thirty. I still have to go it's through the whole entire process. It's, it's just another it. no reason. No well, no 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 then let's do all. There is no exception. Right. Right. So everybody should have a checking account that can give us a checking account and we wire the money into the checking account. Right. If they don't have it, go get one. Go get one. We can't let that money out all over the floor roll down anymore. It's not the positive. We're about 75% right now. Check for cash. 75% of direct deposit right now. But we print checks. We print checks now. So even if you're direct deposit, it just shows void at the bottom. This is waste. And, and, I, and you'll notice that I still sign them because I'm let's still looking at it. Besides avoiding checks. Okay, let's have to talk about all the checks that you have to sign, all the things that you have to sign, every envelope that you put it in, so that we can rip it open no, and go, okay, we're going to issue it for the envelope and trash it. Remember, yeah. we pay the, for any change order, we yeah. pay per foot. So when they finally did the final measurement, he went out right and, and it was not as many feet of curve, not as many, and then it took $3,000. Yes. I don't think we have to turn into all advertising, but I want to lend. That's why I don't know. Can we ask Len before we do it? You just want you already advertised? No, no, no. In other words, we push for over 20%. Yes. It's a procedure we have. To, we did the last one. We did that. We passed those two resolutions. And I have put that no. notice in the paper that we went over 20% basically and that's it to the world. So I did that. So now there's a different amount. The question for them was do we have to change what we put in the paper? Because you give specific amounts, specific percentages. Is it less money or more money? Less. less. I don't less. think it would have to be a thing. Less. Less. Sounds yeah. better. Well, we can do it on Tuesday, correct? And we'll get an opinion from that. Okay. So you'll put it on, though, the change so order to reduce it on Tuesday. What, what is the purpose of this? We, we have went out and measured all the quantities in the field. And based on those measurements, we're paying on a unit basis. Now it's a deduct because... But we have to have a mechanism to receive this or charge a different amount, so we have to do the paperwork to say but it's a negative change order. All right, so that's a land one, so that'll be on. Uh, maintenance bond for Beaver Branch Park, soccer field, and irrigation. Is that releasing it or is that accepting it? 
Okay. So everyone's aware that the project is, is complete. We have a bond in case something goes bad. We raise the eyes together. Extension of trash contract for 2015. Now, any changes to the contract? That's what I'm saying. Went up slightly based on the contract. Any changes to what they are picking up? Because I know oh, we have discussed I want that. a public hands done. I want a public hands done also. They're going right by 90% of them? Correct. It was not done at, at the time when this, when we discussed this the first time, it was not going to be on this one. And we were making changes. We needed to. Because the only reason this is back before you again is because they gave us the signature pages. And they've already, the other two towns have already reviewed it and signed it. So we need to at least get the one that we're using now from the previous time we had the conversation. It makes sense if they're going down the pipe and they pick up the can. I agree with that. I think they should pick up all the public hands. Oh, yes, they're not. Joe's not your driving degree. Well, that, you know what? Doctor, they'll do whatever we want. That's one of the problems. I'm not talking just about that, but if they're driving down the lane picking up thousands, there's a public hand right there. They protect that can. If it's on the road, I don't think that's a problem. But if they do not. Why are we asking? Yeah. You know what? Not, not, not the R Y. Just the one. I'm pretty sure that there's a, oh, there's a list hanging on the wall now of the public hands. So if we send the list to Joe, then he can get back to us and tell us if there would even be an additional cost. Because what's the difference if it's Please, more just a question. He says no. no. But the liners have to be put in, correct? Well, they were putting, they've been using bags. They were working a lot better. Yeah, but uh, what I'm saying is, if Belmar came by on the Black Horse Pike in front of the Philly Diner, they pull the bag out. Then they have to put a, there's a bag in the bottom, they just want to. Because you think they the public can't get empty more than once a week, or they just. They get empty once a week as it sits right now. But sometimes it could be. Well, it depends yeah. on where it is, but they, on average, they get empty every Friday. That's where it's. So they put 10 bags stay. on the bottom. Do they have every one? Right. Do they have every one? No. And I think this writes for where of that as well. They say they do, but do they? have a checklist now. Oh, well, they have a checklist. Progress. So we actually already approved this contract. There was a paperwork problem. So all we're really doing is going to be signed again. Yeah. What is Belmore doing? We have to pick up our trash. It's not shit. We just extended the contract. We're extending the contract. Yes, I know that. But what's this maintenance bond? Oh, I'm sorry. We went over that fast. The soccer field that was put up down at Green Acres, Mr. Bayshore, that contract has gotten to the point where they, they produce a bond that we get the bond in case something bad happens. Say the sprinkler goes bad. It's insurance, it's a five year? Two years. So for two year bond, if anything goes wrong, that bond, they either have to fix it or we use that bond to fix it. They're giving us a bond saying nothing's going to go bad. Okay, not there. And then the trash can. Right, we've stopped that. We've stopped that. We've stopped that access. There's not a lot of access. So, so is council going to have to approve this contract again? It's locking the barn door, you know. Did you approve it? I thought we did. I thought we did too. We can't find any other discussion. We discussed it. That's all we did. Was discussion. Okay. That's all we did. At the next meeting. Next Tuesday's meeting, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll vote to extend the trash contract to the Belmar Mountain. Belmar Mountain from the bar he signed off on it. The cost changed slightly. And the reason the cost changed is uh, the way that they're billing us is they're billing us basically on a wage and cost rate. So their men automatically got 2% raises. So those hours that they're spending in front of me, we're absorbing those 2%. So is that it, correct? Am I so that, so that's, the, that's why it jumped a little bit. It jumps like this. We're, we're following their contract. If they're paying their men twenty dollars an hour, this year they're paying twenty dollars and fifty cents. We're paying the extra fifty cents. It's like a, you know. But it, don't remember, guys, this is a lot less expensive than waste management. We know we a lot. Um, and hopefully, our it's amazing. Our, I think our amount will be down. We've saved a lot. What was that? I think with, hopefully with the weekly recycling, the amount that we're taking to the dump will keep going down. Show it down. That's the well, I have, I've noticed that, that there is already a decrease. It's just a question of, is it decreasing from the holidays? Well, I mean, and it's funny because, like, even this week that they pick up recycling again, or like from the first week, like, of course, there's a huge difference between the scheduled weeks. But I mean, honestly, I sent the information to you the first time that it went. I wasn't completely disappointed, and that was strictly before it hit anything. That 
was just word of mouth. And I was surprised that it was as much as it was just off of word of mouth. Well, the, the only thing that we have to get, get done a little bit better is they have to dump the trucks on the day that they pick it up. Well, they have been, because the, those two, those numbers I gave you were from the days that they dumped, because I made it well, There clear. were days that they did the next day. And the reason is it makes it hard to try to put hard. on the calendar to sit there and say well, what they picked up every day. There were a couple days where they picked up, say, on a Thursday, but they didn't dump until Friday. Oh, no, no, before, but I'm talking since we started doing Since we started since doing it, yes. Yeah. We're, we're working on that, and I can yes. actually found a way to check Wait, it. they've it's only picked it up one time weekly, and then this past week was a regular week. Yeah, but there were once again. They're supposed to be emptying the day they, they pick it up. They did, because I got the... No, look at the dates. The dates should be consecutive. I, I, it's, I know how to tell the difference. If it's if it's dumped at 8 a.m., it's from the prior day. So if there's a way to tell... Because they the, gave me the report for each day that they did it for each right. truck. So you're saying they do it later? The first one was from the prior... From the prior Correct. It before wasn't Christmas. Right. Christmas. So that was only... Because the that was on the different so, thing. Um, no, no, no. They, because I was like, wait a minute. Right. I know for a fact that they took what they right. took the day that we had them do it the first week that was just unannounced. Okay, so you're saying because they showed up late and went to the next day on that one? No, no. No, what I'm saying is that the one that there was an issue with, and I'm not sure it was one or two, it was, I was able to tell the difference because you know, the difference between dropping off at 2 o'clock and dropping off at 8 o'clock is because it was prior day. Because it was so, prior day. Right. So there was a load already. Because so I got the breakdown, right. There's two in the same day. It's like, how do we have two in the same day? Right, so, but I got the breakdown right. of I don't know the actual truck. So. so the way the, the way station way. does it, they just yeah. they push it to the next day. Right. Well, I think what has to happen with it is what we've talked about. We look at the next, we look at a couple months, we look at every That's single exactly day and see what the average is. And I would like to try to see if we can get them a sticker, something that they can maybe put on a can that's a removable sticker to say, remember, this is weekly, to let people know. Because, I mean, I still, right. not everyone goes on the website. Not everyone right. looks, at, you know, at that information. Not everyone's right. on Facebook. Not everyone's on those sites. I mean. Right. Luckily, most people have a sewer bill. Yes, yeah. yeah. so next, next week will be next week. Next week it's an exciting day. But here's one here's one on the They start doing something that they hear the truck in the morning. Yeah, and see everybody else put their hands That's it. And then that's the number right there. That is the side thing. That is the big thing. But what I'm getting at is if if once again, if they're picking up every week and they're getting done at ten o'clock, I think our goal has to be one day a week. Not two days well, I, yeah, I, every week. But remember, I understand that, and that is the ultimate goal. But I'm saying, my thing to you, and I expressed it to you before, was that you can't gauge it until we get further along. I because agree. right now, they were done at 10 o'clock because there were 70 cans out for the whole town. So it's hard to gauge it until it starts to roll. But, what once, time, it starts but once again, roll, what time did they get done? On the other ones, we have to look at every single week and say it was a ten. Was when, a two, on a, a ten. On, when they do West Side on a Wednesday, it takes them the majority of the day. It does, mm -hmm. and you can go back and look at the GPS. Yeah. It does take them the majority of the day on the West Side on a regularly scheduled when it was every two weeks on Wednesday. Now Thursday is a separate different story. They do get done much earlier on Thursday on the East Side of town. It's a lot lighter. It's not the bulk that there is on the West. But I would say once we've already talked this through. Yeah, once we have the data. Starts, yeah. To go weekly, the uh, even the amount on the west side will go down. But it's not going to be ten cans in front of somebody's house. It'll be okay. three. Yeah. So okay. it will go down. I, I, like I said, because you got to understand what ten cans. Oh my god. <laughs> You know, because I understand what we've just done. Have. We've created 52 days more worth of more work that they can't do other things. By doing weekly recycling two days a week, we've lost 52 but days. But it's only a temporary thing. I understand. Temporary. I'm thing. hoping we it's all know. It's, we're goal, that is the ultimate goal, and they are aware that that is the ultimate goal. He's expressed it to them. I've expressed it to them. They get it. There's no doubt that they get it. Because otherwise... Do they comply 100%? I don't know. I let's be clear. I can't tell you that. But everyone, they should. Everyone received the, the, the schedule and goals of the different departments. I understand. And one of the problems is, is that we don't become more efficient in picking up the recycling. The superintendent has made it clear. We need to hire six more people. Okay, let's not go. Please, let's not do that right now. Let's not get into that. That's a separate issue that my committee, we've already started to discuss. Please, let's not, let's just, we're talking about the recycling at this point. Okay. Let's not go into that because you and I have already had a minor discussion about that. And I'm in agreement with where you are on that. And I get it. But let's try to, Okay. let's just, that's something we're going we'll to watch. The we will watch the we'll numbers watch. right now. Let's just see where we are. Okay, we have the uh, union representative of the police department here. He is asking us to get a copy of the signed police contract. This, this council already approved the 
lease contract last year. Uh, for some reason, he needs a copy of it, correct? Yeah, with the signature, so I can disperse them to the guys. Do we have a copy here that we can sign and give them? No. Can you go get it for us? No. Why not? Respect. Why not? Because that's the, I'm not, I don't want to give out a piece with scribbled on it, and we need to discuss the change. Okay, but let's discuss the change, I, but our I, lawyer's I, not here today. I do not believe that this is the form for that. Why not? Just because I think that we should meet with the, the police officers when it's available. And, and I will tell you that the reason it hasn't happened yet is because we didn't have all the information and the agreement before December. So basically, finance and administration put everything aside to work on the police contract, and for the last couple weeks, we've had to address our issues only. And I told Bill as soon as I had a chance. But don't we have an agreement? He has, a copy. Signed, he has a copy of it if they need to see it. So he does not want to give it to the guys without saying I, I understand. Right? That this is does council have a problem with just signing a piece of paper? Because even if council, what the, what the department is saying, if you remember, Mr. Wood said there was a little clarification. I mean, the police department agrees that there was one paragraph that needed a slight clarification. To clarify that, we would have to re-vote and, and make an amendment to the contract. There's more to that. Though. And part of the process that we do now is that we sign off on every page. And yes, we could sit here until 10 o'clock and we could double check it and I could sign off on every page. And I could go back and I could retype the one page that needs to change because I have the ability to do that change. And then we could all sign them. But I think that that's why could it's not Could we sign it next Tuesday night? It could be done by next Tuesday night. That's not Is that agreeable for yeah, next Tuesday night? Whatever is good for Mr. Wright. Yeah, I, I, I agree to do it tonight because we've learned from past practices with the police contract. That You're missing the point. Uh, we've already ratified. But with all due respect, yes, 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 we just have the one page. Correct. There's yeah. just one and, page that has to be And respectfully, but we can't change that page without the entire union voting on it and the entire council voting. I thought we were going to change. But here's we had two different legal interrupt, sir. If I may interrupt, and I'm going to make it clear for Bill and for the record, it's not about getting this done and signing it. It's about the process, and I explained to the union already that it will be done. So you don't go to the mayor and to the public safety committee and then sign at a council meeting to get it done because you didn't want to wait two weeks. So that's exactly what right. That's really what we're asking. So okay. that is my I'm fighting for that's you, okay. but the council has to make the final decision yeah, on what to do. you got to know that it, they know that it went down when me and Dan sat out there right. and that uh, the guys would like a copy of it. So as the shop. And you don't feel comfortable sending them a copy that's not doesn't have our signature. No, I don't want that because and, I want to again, do everything by the number. Respectfully, right. it was the solicitor who recommended the change. We were done right, right. that I, night. I, we, you could have walked out of here with twenty copies that night. So I hear you there. Just so like I said, as the shop store, when they're asking me, right. just they all want copies that it's done hundred percent A to Z and I write their name on the top hand and told them I'll talk about it. No we'll, we'll put a color copy on the website. Well, so we need to change. So, uh, no. No, no, it, the wording is tweaked because it, it, was been, it was inconsistent. The first section said right. you would be right. on it, and the second set was this four. I mean, Sergeant Murray agreed with I that. Right. Yeah, I remember right. 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 We're not changing the actual wording. We just agreed that it isn't. It's changing, no, the, changing the, the word. Changing that the page word. That page Which means they're going to have to sign it. It's one sentence. Yeah, uh, it's the first sentence. Initial, your initial. Right. Yes. Because it is a change to the contract. We'll have to agree to that change. So, I mean, again, to oversimplify and say just print out the page and we'll sign it, it it's a little bit more detailed than that. I understand. I like closure, too. I do. You know, I, and I do, do get a lot of like pressure to get any more phone calls. It was calls. what, about a 55-minute phone, phone call? Yeah, yeah, we had a good one. And he's bigger than me, and you know, he's nah, smaller. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be ready for Tuesday. Tuesday night. Correct. And you'll let the union read that change prior to us signing. Yes. Okay. Put pressure on Nah, he's, okay. he's good. He's That's right, because when good. we get to my section, I'm going to tell you that for the first time since I've been here that we're going to file my legal document on the statutory uh, duty, no, not, I the, in right not the extended date. So, okay. the state here. so police contract amendment and signatures will be next Tuesday night. Everybody okay with that? Yep. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm fine. Yes. And we all agree that the language was because it was just a contradiction. Yeah. It was a contradiction. Oh, okay. Um, I have something that I wanted to bring up to everyone that was important, and it has to do a little bit with potential retirement. Uh, chapter 46, Personnel Policies, talks about holidays, vacations, absences, retirement benefits. I didn't give copies to everyone tonight because I just wanted to talk about it first. Uh, basically, in 1984, uh, the council back then passed an ordinance and said, all full-time employees of the borough of Arnie upon retirement shall be compensated in accordance with the following schedule. Years of service. After five years, if they retire after five years, 
they get $250. After 10 years, they get $500. After 15 years, they get $750. And after 20 or more years, they get $1,000. It also uh, talks a little bit about health benefits, but I wanted to focus on this, on this first. One, one thing that's very important is for continuity in the borough, we have to have employees who are retiring give us adequate notice. And not to say that we have anything that's, that's not adequate at this time, but we have potential. Everything is in the employee's hands. The employee can file for, for retirement and then decide, I'm not retiring. And then they can file for retirement again and decide they, they, they don't want to retire. And what this does is, it, not to say this has ever happened to us, uh, but there's the potential that we can't make d decisions on the future. So what I would like to propose, and this is not unheard of again, is to simply say that this little, this little gratitude stipend is um, predicated on a notice of retirement. And what we've done in the past, the previous employees that have retired, they've been very good. They basically submitted a letter to us saying that they were retiring. We were then at that point able to determine if they had any paid time off, you know, when their retirement date would best, best work for them and, and things like that. It has worked out pretty well. But when we have some important retirements, you know, uh, that puts us in positions where we can't, they, they may necessarily fill that position quickly enough, I think the council has to decide how much time do we need to um, be able to rehire somebody, even something as uh, Wasn't there something in place now that they can give you notification of their retirement up to a certain amount of time? No. Th no. Th that's why I just read it. It's the two weeks notice. That, right. That's all they're required to give us. Yeah, two weeks is a good thing. And two weeks is that's tough. A, that's about it. Yeah. No. So we what that's why we're talking about yeah, that. Yeah. You this and is, I have had a conversation one time, or you and I had a conversation about that they have a, a certain period of time up to... Where correct. Do I, the employees can retire the day before the first of the month. So basically, I, or actually, they can retire any day as of the, the, an effective date. But if I want to retire on the first of the month, I can put my notice in on the 30th or 31st. But then I have to wait for pensions and everything else to catch up to me. Okay. I have but 30, retire. but once I receive okay. my check from pension, now this has to do with the state, not with us. Okay. Once I receive my check, I have 30 days to give it back. I, I can be unretired. Yeah. But okay. the flip side of that is right. that if when the employee gives the borough council a letter of okay. resignation, and the borough accepts it, then the employee can't rescind it unless the borough says okay. All right. so, so what I'm proposing is to ask the And there's no mechanism to force right. anybody to do this. All I'm saying is I'm using this little bit of money to base it, you know, don't get wrong. If someone's planning on retiring, who would like that they're going to retire? All I'm trying to do for us is to say, look, we would like to give you your little gold watch to leave, you know, when you leave, but give us at least 90 days. Four months, six months, some time frame. Now, you know, remember, most of these boys are going to be here for you know, maybe 20, 25 years. Just so we get a notice, we ask for a letter, things like that. We just had a, a police officer, uh, uh, he resigned, and I understand why he waited to the last minute. He needed to make sure that other job was approved and ready to go before he left. But look what it did to us in a little ways. I mean, the department did the best they could to kind of make amends, but you know, we didn't have anything. I mean, until that debt, <coughs> and that was, and then left. You know, we didn't even, you know. This is, this is not even pertaining to that. That's not, resi not resigning. Resigning, you've got to remember. Think about the advantages is all the Are employees. Are you talking re resigning or retiring? No, retiring, but I was just giving an example of resigning. Because. I was just giving an example. I think we're talking about apples and oranges. It's not apples and oranges. It's not apples and oranges. What it is is the simple fact is council is always in, in the short side of the, of the negotiating side. You know, a, a retiree can retire or not retire. We, we can't do anything. A person can, can, can resign, they can leave at any time they want. Sure. We want to hire somebody, we've got to wait for a list. Yeah. We want to promote somebody, we've got to wait for a list. Yeah. We want to do anything, you know, we have to follow this very laborious policies to do anything. Yeah. And all I'm trying to do is, hey, if someone has intentions to retire, give us some notice, we'll give you the thousand dollars. And things like that. That's all I'm really saying. I don't think it's unreasonable. No, I don't think. To make it clear, what, I've talked to some of the people. What kind of? What kind of? What kind of I, Ninety right? days might be more than enough. Is that I, mean, right? I don't think ninety days is out of line, but can you or can you enforce that? How do ah, you do it? I'll make it very clear. It's it with management. So it's management. No, it's not management. You can't put it on the contract. You can't. This thousand because it's a it's a uh, it's a retained benefit. 
Yeah. You're telling me council couldn't rescind this ordinance if we wanted to. For manager. We couldn't rescind we couldn't rescind it for anybody else. No. Was it retained? We would have to negotiate that. I mean, how can you yeah, well, management is really who I care about. Right. Well, I mean, I can understand for management, but I'm going to say, like, how can you really, uh, that's, why, that's why I asked, how can you enforce that? How can well, you what he's saying is we, we have to negotiate with contractual people because it's a retained benefit. Remember the old thing. That door is one way. Once we give somebody something, we can never take it back. We have to negotiate it out, which we just proved last, last month. We gave, there was benefit given, we wanted it back, we had to pay for it. Only management follows these ordinances we have to do. Yeah. Once again, I just want everyone to be conscious. We need to do certain things that help protect the borough. And something as simple as a letter saying, I'm retiring in 90 days, I don't believe that's unreasonable. We accept it, it's happened with everybody else, and it's been pretty, pretty good. Well, would give us a chance to get our, our ducks in a row to, to fill the hole? I would love to have six months. I would love to have a, a year's month. Well, because why not? That's really. No, no, I would love to have it. But 90 days is adequate, is what I'm saying. You know, yeah, for months, a you but for can you get it? You know, right. And also, is there going to be a penalty? Yes, they don't get the thousand. That's the penalty. They don't get the thousand. What, what, what is the chief of police? The chief of police in Cleveland, of police in Cleveland one day showed up, said, "I'm not coming to work anymore." Left and walked out. Guys, you want to tell no, me? No, that's the truth. Right. 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 He walked out. He shouldn't get to all the day. When he had so he was just sick days. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sick is another issue. No, well, is 90 days enough then? Are they going to have 90 days of sick days? It's possible. So then let's go up to 120. Are they going to have 120 days of sick days? No, no, sick time is not payable. And sick time is not payable. But your argument is use Our problem is we have to call people out and we feel sick time is not sick. If someone's taking sick time because they have it, we need to call them out. I didn't know that. Just happened. But it just happened, and we just didn't happened. call them out. Okay, you want me to make it clear? No. We all wanted them to leave, I, I, so we, we can hold our nose. Right. Right. You bring it up. I, I don't think we no. should be talking about it. Bring it it's up. A, a, it's, a person, it's, a it's a personal, it's a personal it's issue, and, and, and it was supported. Water under the bridge. It was a personal issue supported by proper documentation. So I think on that, there's a difference between. But whether it was supported on proper documentation, it also came before council that we collectively agreed that we would not bother to fight it because it wasn't worth it. That was what the, that was the right. standard that came out. It wasn't worth well, fight. All I'm saying. I didn't mean is, to bring that up. I'm terrible. Yeah, but it's I true. I just want to know what the yeah. What, what Let, the, let's talk the about time the We're talking about what kind of a time frame we want. Well, this all included into it. This is I'm trying to get a time frame, time frame, frame to where they can't. All right, we need 90 days. I got 91 days sick time. I'm out. See you. That's actually what right. happened in Clayton. The chief of police went out on extended medical and never showed up ever again. That's it. Well, so have 90 days if they say, have 90 days to do We're it. not going to be able to protect everything. No, so, I mean, no, you know, of course. This is only as a courtesy. A loophole, and, he, and, and they always find whatever the loophole is. There's always a way to find whatever the loophole is. I think, it, I think 90 days is reasonable. I really But I agree with him and the point like I think I think, think have any sick there. Are they gonna be able to boot that ninety days? I think that ninety days is fine. If you're not able to tell us you know, you're not you're just saying you're taking a point that we have to be cautious about because we can't we can't buy our loot the fact that people are not I wouldn't want to go super slow and we can make sure it goes we I can guarantee you but they get sick since the day they're older and they're retired. What if they get sick before they retire? So then they have a doctor, then they're entitled to use their sick time. And they have FMLA. Oh, listen, there's so many. They have FMLA. This is a Len like question because there are FMLA entitlements. There's so many things that they, it, everything is on the employee side. Everything's on the employee side. So from that point of view, you're assuming that unless there's an egregious case, that it's bona fide sick Right. Now, we are in a different planet than when I first got here. When I first got here, I had an employee that went to the workers' comp doctor and said, I am perfectly fine, I'm ready for full duty. And then was down the block a half hour later and got a specialist note that said that the employee was so injured that they couldn't work. And basically then applied for major illness. And I denied the major illness. And I got a earful from the union rep and said, we have past practice. I said, you show me a case and give me the name in the past where we authorized that and I'll pay. And the union did not grieve it and it went away because that was egregious. From those days, we've come a long way to how we're handling things now. And I think that we've progressively gotten better and better because the council has been informed of the policies and rules. We've had to bring in special labor council from time to time to make sure that we were all on the same page. 
because we have a lot of employees that think that they know what the law is, and they just know what we did in the past. And I'm not singling out any one department, but what we did in the past was not necessarily the, the right thing to do, it's what council allowed. So you guys set the policies, we support them, and you're, you're doing a good job and you're supporting me. So going forward, uh, we will continue to do that. So we're not, okay. it's case, it literally that. is case by case. I say we do 120 days. You know, uh, once again, this, this is just for discussion. So it's just, it's just They're not making it up in 90 days. Oh, I'm going to retire. You know, four months is not yeah. outrageous. It really is. not 90 days, I think, is decent. You know, uh, well, to give, give an example, the county I does six months. The county months. does six months. Just what to let you know. It's going to happen in four months. The county does six months. It's really, it's not like they're, they're shooting for a vacation. This is just for a small uh, It's a thousand dollar cash. You're putting a line out there for a thousand dollars. If I wanted to just use my time and leave without telling you, I would just. It always is just a trunk. It's a trunk. Yeah, it's a little gift. If you really only give gifts when it's warm. That's the point. The it's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. The fact that we need to replace these people. Yeah. Don't leave us hanging. That's what I said. It's, it's the replacement time. Right? Right? I don't know. Replace these people. Absolutely close session. Doesn't matter. Do you think so, three months is too so short? I think four months is, is adequate. You know? How does everybody feel about that? I'm okay. I'm okay with it. What do you like? I'm looking for once. I, I agree. This isn't a decision that they made. And, and then we'll, 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 we'll clarify that it's a, it's a management thing. Something you wanted to talk about, like, right now? Uh, yeah, it's very important. It, it is important because, you know, one of the things that, that I don't know if anybody's noticed is, uh, you know, we have difficulty hiring people, and, right? Yeah. We have difficulty hiring. We, we, you know, we want our employees to be happy to work here, but you know what? There's going to be personal circumstances that make people do what they need to do for them. And all I'm trying to say is how do we just... We shouldn't be this is not much. You're right. It's a thousand dollars. So, but whatever we can do to, like, like John brings out a good point. It's a gift that we're giving somebody. It's a gift to us. Please so give us a letter. Thousand dollars. They have to. Have Mike, if somebody wants to take advantage of us, it is hard. It's hard. But we're doing our best to follow the rules. We have good management that's helping us in a lot of cases. Uh, you know, but that's all this is. And, and you know, we have we're we're an older department now. I don't know. Another department. We're an older borough. The borough is seasoned. We have a lot of people that's been here a lot of years. We have very little succession plans. There are very few people who are lined up to work behind the next person. I can you know, bring up case after case in this borough where we have people who've been here for a long time, they've been doing the job, and there's no one else who knows how to do their job. And, uh, you know, we have to think about no, that. I agree with John, though. I think it's, it's a, this is the gift that we're giving you that we, in turn, ask that you give us this gift. Now, give us some consideration. You know, yeah. now this is more, and Rich is right, it's only for management because they are actually the more important at the top people, things like that. Um, you know, they're harder to replace than replacing a rank and file or a, a, a laborer or something like that. But, uh, you know. Well, may I interrupt? Them? Sure. If you're going to do it, you might as well go all in. Go all in. And I, I say that you should also tie it to the, the benefits. I, I, we, I, we I brought that with me too. We made a change last year where we changed the way that it was written. And I think that that change should be updated, but I think 90 days is reasonable, but that's just my, if you're gonna tie that to it. But, and, wow. and, and on this topic- We're not voting on it tonight. Correct. No, no, it's just for discussion. And a little, a little bit of, of background on this issue. This is not an issue that's new to Runway because I've audited and worked in many large places. Mm -hmm. And it was common in the past when an employee maybe didn't trust management or had a bone to pick with management, that they would drive up the pensions at the state and they would get all their ducks lined up for weeks and weeks and weeks in a row and file the paperwork at the state level and eventually they would send a notice to payroll that could take about you know six to eight weeks before you even, so, so there's even, they knew it and you didn't know it. Now, the minute they push the send button, I get an email at, you know, in the wee hours of that morning. So we know now if they don't come to us, an employee would go to the state level within 24 hours. We have, we have all done to notice that they now. filed their budget. We know the next day. But this, this is not an issue that's run meet, and, and I don't think that, that some, you know, it's, well, it's I, everywhere. I, I, th I think the 90 days is okay. your simple. And, and, and then I think what, what he was saying. Well, it's not 90 days, you said 120. Well, we're, we're talking, she's we're saying talk, 90, I'm, you're saying 120. That's only I'm, I'm going with 90. I think that's reasonable. Do uh, you want to talk at all about that, Brenda? Well, I'm just, my comment for 90 wasn't to, to take away that was 1,000, you know, make a year. Yeah. You know, if you're going to put something that. Now, this is another, obviously, 
what I need counsel to do, and I'll send everybody a copy, and I hope everybody gets a chance to read these different things. And these are, once again, we're dealing with stuff that was passed in 1984. The, the other one was passed in 1990. So these are things we need to, we need to reevaluate some of these things. For tonight, do you want to tell me what you were going to say about the health benefit? What were you going to say about tying it in? And to get the health benefit, you also got to give us the notice? Right. It's legitimate. It gives them a little more teeth. Because what it's basically saying is we're going to give you this benefit, the gift. You know, you've worked with us for 20, 25 years, 10, whatever years. Give us a note. That's all we're asking for. It's a letter. It's just the What's the health benefit the time? The, the, the Employees shall assume, assume the cost of health care, including prescription and dental benefits for employee independence when said employee retires with 25 years or more of service. So once again, somebody's with 25 years, they send us a letter saying, I'm retiring. It helps us to say, fine, you'll get the $1,000 and you'll get the health benefits. You see what he's saying? Yeah, okay. is, is and if they don't give the information, they get no health benefits? Yes. At all? Yes. Well, that'll fix that. <laughs> <laughs> right. and, and again, obviously, I did not suggest that. that. There needs to be exceptions. Someone, if, someone's if someone got sick and they have to leave, retirement, yeah, something along those lines. There might be some exceptions. With an exception. You know, there was a hardship. But once again, all we're asking for, Tom, is a letter. Just a letter saying, I'm retired. I'm not asking for blood. They, they don't deserve it. I, well, I, agree. I agree. You've got to commit to the town leave. Got, yeah. I always, I always I look for some kind of commitment. Yeah. You know? And 90 days, 120 yeah. days, that's, a, that's a, just a nominal number to just make us have enough time to say we can replace this person. And also, that's good. it agree. takes away yeah. the finding out about it at 7 yeah. yeah. I don't want to find, find out about it at 7 yeah. 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 that kind of thing. Yeah. So, Okay, so let's talk about it. I'll, we'll, we'll propose something we don't have to do. Well, I hate to say I wouldn't like to do this next month oh, or next week. I missed that. So I might get something typed up. Yeah. I mean, you can review this. Do you have copy? Do you want to review this? No, no, no. I'm fine. Well, it's not just the public safety committee. This has to do with all of us. This is all man basically all management employees because it's contractual with everybody else. We. You know. I guess it's yes. Okay. Uh, there's, no, just so, there's no legal. I want to answer a question down here for everybody. There's no legal requirement to provide health benefits. It's Life. something that the employer chooses. Is it? I mean, it's in the code, so that's just the answer. You know, uh, just you know, I went to my first mayor's association meeting, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, me, I, I I start things and I start talking and I say, you know, what do you do? You know, I, I ask that question, what do you do? So, some towns? No, I'm not going to tell that story. That's a good story. But uh, some towns do not get lifetime benefits. Some towns are in a state health benefits plan. There's all kinds of different mechanisms. The state of New Jersey does not have survivorship. The county does not have survivorship. There's all these different, there's no rule out there. You know, remember, New Jersey is a home rule state with the idea that, you know, the, the, the seven of us get to decide what happens. Just like in 1990, they decided they wanted to do this. And as you can see, I think $1,000 in 1984 was probably a lot of money, wasn't it? You know, yeah. it's, never been, it's never been increased since 1984. So what does that say, you know, and things like that? But we, you know, every town has done different, has done different things. We're going to give you $1,000. Sure. Yeah. It's but, a little but, but here's the point, though. Well, I, but you have an interesting, she's an interesting point. Does it have more weight if you say it's $2,000? Right. And they say, okay, yeah. for that letter, it's two thousand dollars. But now tying the health benefit in really gives it a lot of teeth. And I think that's that's the, the, the basis. It gives it a lot of teeth. A little gift I will make it clear, it wasn't my intention, but it gives it a lot well, of teeth. Well, I think the administrator it's, came up with a good point. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, another one. Uh, and like I said, I, I don't I mean to jump around and talk what other people are talking about, but uh, obviously the, the uh, Mr. Mr. Farrell has been interested in much that we have to look at this parking lot. Council, we don't have our attorney here tonight, but I think it's really important that we, if we're going to move forward with this parking lot idea next door, and we have a, we have a, uh, a willing seller, I think we have to make an agreement with that willing seller to purchase those properties at the assessed value. You know, I'm hoping that council... Well, I heard that the one person was objecting to the assessment. He was asking for more money. I know. But I think I think, think he's coming around. He may, and I think one of the things we can do to make him come around is to simply make an agreement with the other property owner. I think some of the members of council have, have talked, uh, and I think the idea is 
We simply make a commitment to our neighbor to buy these properties, and I think that'll give a lot more teeth to do and then this. And the guy will fold. No, no, I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a public <laughs> meeting. This is a public meeting. So. Does his property come all the way back to the fence? No. Well, that's the other guy. No. Because we're having a problem, right? right? You know. So if even if he doesn't get on board, we can go we can around. Still do a parking lot. Right. Could we make the offer contingent upon that other uh, yeah. owner to, to sell in the time frame? I think that's I think a good that's idea. Very yeah. wise so you can put a contingency on there. Yeah. You know, and what that does is allows us to negotiate. You yeah. know, and remember our, our policy. We've been trying to stay at assessed value because that was a fair amount. I think it's and I think we have to keep pushing on it. And I think if, if we have a, 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 an agreement of sale, I think it helps us move to the next level. So. So if everyone's okay, I'll talk to our attorney, Mr. Wright. I'm sure he has to make sure we have the certified funds to purchase something. So, Mr. Wright, now it's your question. Can we buy this piece of land? I know we can, but and what, are we going to do? what do you tell us? How should we do it? Well, that's, that's a good segue into what it's we have in front of us. So, <laughs> if you don't mind my digressing for a second, just because I have a, I have a little bit of show and tell. Uh, basically, there's two sides to every bond issue, and sometimes they get interchanged and, and it gets confusing. When council passes an ordinance that gives you the authority to spend or to buy stuff or something, so basically what has to happen in order to buy that property is that council has to pass an ordinance to a spending appropriation. Then we either use the cash that we have on hand get temporary, or use temporary financing to, to, to pay for it today, or we wait until we have the funds to pay for it. What I have in front of me today, and I'm required to report at the next regular meeting, although this is kind of a regular meeting, meeting, is this is a little show and tell. This is a bond note for $4.4 million. So on February 2nd, they will wire in $4.4 million, and then we will pay back on the 6th the 3.2-ish that we borrowed last year. So we're doing short-term financing. Um, last year, at three point two million dollars, we paid zero point seven percent. This year, that well, that, that was pretty good for last year. But this year, we uh, sold. Uh, and basically, how this works is, bond council puts out a notice to all the banks. We give them some financial information. Joyce gives them copies of the minutes and the ordinances that we have to date in our short-term financing. And we're allowed to do this for up to ten years. Although after the third year, we have to start making payments. So last year for the not for the ambulance and for other stuff, we had to pay down twenty-one thousand dollars last year. So um, and and that will keep happening now because we're starting to catch up, catch up with minimal payments. Um, basically, they put the notice out, put all the information out there. But let me, let's make it clear: we're still making our payments on our old notes. Oh sure. Correct. So we're paying off this loan as this loan is right. here. We're so paying the, the, the amount is still the same. It's just being shifted. Correct. If we never borrowed any more money, we'd have zero debt, but then we wouldn't have fixed the roads. We would not have done anything. It's a shell game. It's a shell game. Well, it's not a shell game. It's, it's, it's good, good finance. It's good you, you don't want to go to the market every We could, if These we were, are we were a large place, we would go to the market every year. A small place, that there's a cost maybe from 65, 40, 50, 60, depending on what you need to have done. Did you have to pay that to the bond issue? Right. So it costs us about $2,000 to roll over a bond. There. So short-term financing with the rates that they are now, yeah, you know, we might pay somewhere between 2.5 and 3.5 for long-term financing because it's more uncertainty over the next 10 years. They know what the market's going to be for this year. Now, where we could get burned, at least for one year, is it well, actually multiple years, is if the market goes south when we go to sell permanently, we could end up paying four instead of three. So that's where you rely on your bond council and your financial advisors. Um, so what we did is we did a request for proposals, and we got in, I believe, five quotes, four or five quotes. The highest, and I think some people are just out there fishing to see if they can get a good deal, was 1.25%. And the one that was the winning bid was, I believe, PNC Bank. PNC Bank, thank you. For some reason, I was looking at TV there, but they were under the second bid. Uh, it was 0.59 percent. So that's that's pretty hard. Was the high a bank, an actual bank? All banks. Oh, they're all banks. It's a bank, right? So TD this year was 0.67. So that was also very competitive. I mean, it was 0.01 percent spread. I, that was 
Pretty money. Good. Or give them like so, <laughs> so basically that that that's good. It, it shows that there's well, it also shows the market. I mean, our, it's not just yeah, but our, our credit must be really good. I mean, to get uh, that kind of a rate. It's right? short term credit, we're we're pretty good. Yeah. Long term and they compare there's other things that they'll compare, you know, the things that are negatives are they look at your top ten taxpayers, they look at your your demographics, they look yeah. at your your employers in the town. So you know, what is the odds that your top two people won't pay their taxes and then you can't pay back your your taxes? We we do aggressive payback, which is what they like. We pay between ten to thirteen years, we pay off our debt. So we have three payments left on prior debt. So what I've been doing since I got here is I've been, and it's been the plan, is to do short-term financing because the rate's been so low. How, what, what time frame is that? What's the maximum short-term? One year? One year. Um, it, we don't have a current one because we haven't done permanent financing since 08. I believe that I can look that up. But we're probably going to do it this year. So right. you're right. We'll get we're, Moody's. Yes, we're going to Moody's is going to rate the barrel oh, running. No. Yeah, yeah. Like right. So we are going to adopt some policies over the next month or two, okay. um, just for the sake of, you know, in New Jersey, we're, we have a, a sovereignty model, which is a joke to some degree, especially with Atlantic City now hiring a bankruptcy specialist. But I worked in the city, and the mayor decided to file for bankruptcy. And, and he had some valid points because we would not have been able to meet the payroll. I mean, I actually certified the, the papers for bankruptcy because the state took back our state aid. It wired in, and they wired the $20 million back out. So he went to the federal courthouse, he filed for bankruptcy, and the judge threw it out because they said in New Jersey, you're required to go to a local finance board to get permission because the state gets paid first. So basically, in New Jersey, there's very specific rules, and, and that helps. So our state law says that we can't have investments over a year. That, that if many of the things that we do, because it's state law, we should also have ordinances, because then when they come in, they say, do you have an ordinance for this? Do you have an ordinance for that? What is your policy on surplus? What is your policy on, you know, on your debt? We can't go over 3.5%. Yeah, we're, we're, about, we're about 1.25%. So we're nowhere near the okay. upper limits. So that answers one of your questions. Can we legally do this? Yes. Second question is, can we afford to do it from the tax perspective with the, for those who went to the class the other night, the, the levy cap of 2010, the, the, <laughs> the appropriations seven. cap of 77, you know, so there's all these rules that we have in what we can spend our money on, and the exceptions. But, so this this is the cash flow side, to get back to the point. So, so what's the price that we're looking at here? What's the price that we're looking at for this building? Well, the assessment I have the three buildings is about 300, $35,000, and, and uh, he's agreed to, as a total, as a total, he's agreed to allow us to purchase them at the cost for us to take them down. Uh, we don't have that number yet. I would say, based on uh, some prior that's expenditures that the borough has done in the past. Well, that's if we do a good job and get good bids. In the past, the borough has been charged a little bit more. We both pay close to 10000 a building at some I'm sure but, because uh, he ha they are rental properties. They, have they are bigger. And if you can't get that for the property, there's a shared wall. Yep. It makes a little more work. Yeah. Yeah. We need uh, we need engineering studies to make sure okay. we're not taking on hazards. Uh, there's a lot of say, work to get there. So. There's, a lot, of, there's yeah. a lot, and I'm sure, I would hope, because they were rental, that there were certain things that he had to comply with, but those are old buildings. Yeah. yeah. But obviously, you know, getting rid of this old stock that doesn't have good parking, their, their buildings are terrible. I mean, right, the one door is like split a foot and a yeah. half off the, yeah. off the ground. It's not ADA anymore. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to change the whole look of the pipe. And, and this has been an ongoing problem for, what, 10 years when the borough lost all the parking on the Black Coast Pipe. I'm not saying it's going to fix everything. I, I, I know that it's, it's going to help. It's going to help with the parking the borough. It's going to help with. Um, did we look access, ADA did we look access. To the property across the street at all? Uh, the only thing I can tell you about the property across the street I is. I know about the property behind that, but we're talking about the sale. immediate property. Do we have any I idea? do not personally look at it. Anybody's welcome. I did originally. I had called originally. You know, <coughs> I do have a big laundry list that I try, and I try to do. Um, the only other thing I, I have, the only other thing that Mrs. Mrs. Moore had asked to at least be discussed with Mr. Mr. Wood is not here with the property maintenance issues. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it, it just seems to be, I mean, listen, this time of year is not a pleasant time of year. Everything looks really ugly anyway. And uh, it just seems to be more and more, I mean, there were 
two houses I spoke to Keith about, and he went out and went after them both. One was occupied, so they, he did get some action on what he went after them for. Um, the other is another vacant house. So now on 3rd Avenue, on the corner of Reed and 3rd, there are two next to each other. The one was owned, it in terms of, I think it was a issue of divorce. Someone was still living there, he decided to leave, he left, they started to rent it, and um, now it's empty. They take, they take it off. And the place is, is it's a disaster. There is garbage all over the place, all around the building. There are trash cans over the <coughs> The pictures were just unbelievable. I mean, there was so much debris left. Well, one thing, just to So I did go, and he will cite them. They've been cited before, so it's always an issue of trying to get them to go. I just have a question. I don't know, this probably falls before the planning board more than it does council. I just want to know, is there a way, and I'm not saying all rentals, is there a way to put a moratorium on rentals? Because I seem to see many, many houses that are up for sale, don't sell, boom, now they got a rental sign on them. So that's a problem for me because that affects the town. It's a land way. use. It's a land use issue, right. and you I don't change the, the zoning ordinances mm -hmm. to be allowed to because it's happening a lot. There are several that were all for sale. Now they all have signs that well, say for rent. What some other towns have done is they've done uh, um, incentives to get rid of duplexes. Uh, remember that? I don't think she's well, talking about single family. Oh, we're talking about single family homes that were up for sale. Why do you they convert them? No, and now they're selling. Now they've got signed up for rent. Well, you can put a well, moratorium on have. rentals in your town. I know that you can do that. I know. I have to say that's a legal problem. That's fine. But why don't you send an email? We can try to answer. But yeah. what I was going to say is, I'm not against rentals, and that's fine. I mean, there are rentals in town, and that's fine. But it seems to be that a lot of these big towns, and I get they're vacant anyway. Well, they're trying to keep them rented so they're not empty, and so well, they get some income. But then they also start to because an empty house is even worse than a rental house. Got to pay the taxes on them. Well, empty house well, is worse. Well, they want a rental. Yeah, they have to pay the taxes. But getting back to your point, I mean, if it's we can amend, the state can only allows us now. We could amend our. Remember how we're charging five hundred dollars? I know. We're allowed to go up to twenty five hundred. Right. So if you'd like, what I'll do very, I could try very quickly, is to see maybe we can even amend that to twenty five, up to twenty five hundred dollars. Well, then I'll ask you as the mayor, please try to put a fire under um, with Chris Mecca because I know that Keith has reached out to him. I have reached out to him, and I'm not getting anywhere with this one particular house in question that's on Oakland Avenue. Right. The house is in, yeah, I've driven people and it's there. worse now. Now the tarps are completely gone again <laughs> off the roof, so the roof is completely exposed yet again. Um, I'm not is it bank owned? It is it's under some a property. There's a, a property maintenance company taking care of it to some extent. And granted, they do comply when the um, when he cites them, they will come out and they continue to put tarps on the roof. But at this point, literally the holes are like this big in the roof on the back end of the house. The front end of the house now is also falling apart. So I mean, these are the issues that I want us to find out. Is there something? I mean. Can we increase it? I'm in favor of increasing it if it's going to get something done. Well, I, have, have, have you seen what Audubon is doing now? Well, that's what I'm saying. We could, they're, they're, the laws have started to change. He presented that as with a letter, I believe, yeah. in almost everybody's mailbox at one point, saying this is what Collinswood's doing, this is what Audubon's doing, yeah. this is what they yeah. consulting also did. What? We need to, we need to Audubon start. Audubon is really yeah. taking an aggressive So stage. many of these houses well, that clear. are just not being maintained by a property maintenance right. company. They're bank owned, and the bank doesn't care. Yeah. The bank the doesn't bank, care. They really care. Let, let's be, any mm -hmm. member of council can show up with ordinance that they want to pass. You know, uh, this is my seventh year, or seven years, you know, as a member, you know, show, bring up on the, bring an ordinance and say, this is what I want to pass. Because th this is the way to do it. You know, one of the problems we've run into all the time is when we try to start from scratch or, you know, just have discussion, we don't get anywhere. You know, and you know how I am with the aggressiveness. Even if it's not 100% perfect, let's, let's adopt it or let's fight over it and let's I get it done. So any member of council, you know, all you have to do is say, I want this on the agenda. Let's let, do exactly what the planning board does. The planning boards never used to do this in the past, but now they're doing it because that's the way it should be. They have the right to recommend uh, an ordinance. It comes in front of us. They can't adopt, but they can give it to us. So same thing. If, you know, even Keith could have come with that particular ordinance and we could just simply that's what this home-based business one is. That's what the motor department tells us. It's, it's someone else. To sit there and write it from scratch, there's 565 municipalities out there. We do not need to invent the wheel over and over and over again. We can tweak it, but don't do it. Did you have anything else? Uh, we'll go well, around the there. same thing. Isn't there, some, isn't there a program, something through the county, that we can try to get these 
some of these buildings rehab to try to get them? You know, there I are say buildings. Habitat for Humanity, but for lack of another company off the top of my head, like I'm saying, is there something that can? Well, the county recently a nonprofit bought a property in town, and we now have they are down tax free. So it's good and bad. You know, we lost all the taxes on it, right, Joyce? But they are rehabilitating it. You know, there are builders out there doing it. There's, there's actually, and we didn't talk about it, which we need to talk about, is the street opening question, but we'll get to that. There's new houses being built in town. So um, there is a lot of going on, but uh, you know, the CDBG, there's income requirements to get your house fixed up. Right. But there's gotta be in the zone. Right? It's gotta be in the zone and there's hard things. So, um, we, you know, once again, there's seven of us here. Anyone can take the right. lead on this, bring it here. I don't mean to talk. No, no, certain no, things I'm good at, certain things I'm not good at. We'll keep again on the information, we'll move forward. Well, well, with what, why can't know. we just set up to, to increase that one our ordinance? Right? I agree 100%. percent we will double check it. We can just go from 500 to 25. I think that's Charity an easy amount. Charity Health made it huge, and they increase it every single time. They, they go back with right. another meeting. All right, so it's a line only for bank $2,500 is only for bank owned. Cherry well, that would be a nice a amendment. Property maintenance. But Every single time they have to do anything, they continue to, if it sits empty for a certain amount of time, Cherry Hill will increase it to the next level. If it sits empty for this much longer with no no activity to improve right. it or to get it sold, then they increase it again. I agree. So Bank those properties are definitely should be treated differently. And I, think I agree. State realize that. But uh, on this topic, and the ones where people know, obviously, is one hand. Right. On the other hand, we almost see, we talked about the, the roads in the I don't know if we'll talk about that later, but we also need to have a property inventory, and and they have to have statuses because we you know we've talked in somewhere and at other points in time where you know or we get a call from the police department we need to clean out and board up over there. Well, if you have somebody that just left and the house is in half decent shape, then that's fine if they're available, and that's another issue. If we're available and we have the manpower to do it, then we do that. But we're putting people in places that they shouldn't be in, also. If, they're, if it's not healthy, they shouldn't be in there. They, yeah, they, have, they should have a suit, they should have a respirator on. I mean, so, but our guys, uh, just in the past, and again, it's how it's always been done, they'll just run right in there, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong, because they said, we have to do this, code enforcement said to go do it. So we need to know if it, it's a type one, then it's okay to do it. If it's a type two, we need to contact this vendor, even if we have to pay what for it. the fire department has done that? They, they, well, they that's, the, no, that, well, that's do not enter with the X. So I'm talking though, right. but these properties also, didn't right. get there overnight. They went exactly. from here to where it had to, the, the people you know, left, they I, rented I think it. What, we, what we've been talking about for the past two years is, where are these homes? How many are there? Mm -hmm. And what are we doing about it? As you're saying, how do we get a property? Here's what we have. Right. We Here's have a public here. works department that drives around town all day. We have a police department that drives around all day. We have a fire department, sewer department. We just need to know. coordinate the and, process. And we're Chief talking about. Can you minute on this? Because he, we talked about this in our last public safety meeting. Right. Chief, remember you talked about this yes. at the last public safety yes. meeting. Thank you very much. What, what are we doing here? Uh, Ms. Kelly, Ms. Passio. Um, John, I didn't hear you plan because you weren't on council yet. I wrote, wrote a basic, very vague plan on abandoned homes. And abandoned homes, not only abandoned homes, but bank owned homes and absentee landlords. That's going from homes that need to be boarded up to absentee landlords that do not maintain their property. What's the recommendation if, let's say, like our borough garage guys go out and they do a great job and they're mowing along and a bank can just pay hundred dollars whatever. Well, if you start hitting them with a five hundred dollar fee, we have increased. Well that's the point though. Can you generate a list? Do you think your department could generate a list? And then we can then give it to the public works council can see it and start to evaluate. I think if we met with uh he's nice and we met with Nick Ritz and we find out what homes he's going around and cutting grass, we will definitely sit down and help generate a list. But what I presented was a basic plan that needs some adding on and some legal verbiage to it that says that we need to address these problems and these properties. That certain property, um, I kind of fact it, um, Barbara Rogers went right out there and poured up the property because it was being used as a shooting gallery. Okay, that's a problem. The house she's talking about is a problem. How do you know that thing's not structurally gonna but you don't have, know. But we have. We've sent our construction code official, and we've not done no, it. But Chris, that's not true. I spoke to Chris and said to him, 
what are the steps if we were to condemn a house? What do we have to do to condemn a house? And that was the issue because he didn't go out there to cycle his, his this is feeling was it's a complicated process. It has to be an eminent danger. And I said to him, yeah, what determines eminent danger? Have you been in it? Because I promise you, the floors are gone. There's no way. Has he refused to go to the property? No, he hasn't refused. He's just that was his response to me. It has to be an eminent danger. I in turn spoke to he. He said, well, I'll talk to I'll talk to right, Chris. So yeah, and that's kind of where it stalled because I know it is a process. It is a long term process. But I have to start with looking at the house. Yeah. But you know, you will find them. You don't find them just once. You find them every single month. Every time you have to go out and mow on, it's a five hundred hour thing. Okay. Okay. We do. We do. No, that. every time. We do. Every yeah. single yeah. time we cut the lawn. Yeah. And, and then every month we might put out the twenty five hundred. Right. We want to fix it. But you got to keep doing it. We, we do it. it. Every we do. single time we you know, cut but, the lawn, they get a lien. But these abandoned houses, if you hit them once with fifteen hundred hours. And he doesn't apply, you pay him a gambling If it doesn't That's stop the place from being abandoned, what's happening is by us raising our fees, they're hiring companies to go out and cut the grass down. But the house still is dilapidated. Right, but they're also hiring companies that maintain, because there's a property down on, uh, I guess that's technically kind of, I guess that's singly, I guess it's singly, that's been abandoned. You know the house I'm talking about, that white one on the left hand side. That, okay, that yeah. house, the fence that was falling down. He contacted and whoever it was, down. and I, right, but that property is, has some type of maintenance that there's a person that owns that property. It's not a bank own situation, but they pushed it off. And when Keith addressed the issue of the fence falling down and the issue of the condition of the property, they were like, well, you just have your part of the property go out and do whatever they need to do. They're not taking responsibility for it. They're not going to take it down. It's not their problem. And Keith said, so so we not the works go out and take it down. And I go, right, but then we're not solving the problem. Yeah, well, I think what, what um, uh, Mr. Moore is saying is that it, it's like Cayman City is now taking a more aggressive approach, saying, now, you know what, you're not taking care of this problem, we're going to condemn your house. Well, that's it. And there are well, other why towns. can't we do that? Well, that's a big example. There are about 3,000 houses. No, no. There. But you know what? But they, if you just write the paper, they are not care enough houses. Mr. Zamposki, did you want to ask? The only thing I say is in, in regards to that, I, I have a good report relationship with Mr. Knight in the sense that when I see something out of control, I go somewhere there's a problem, I report it to him. He takes care of it immediately. And what happens was I'm our warrant coordinator. When somebody don't do what they're supposed to do and it turns into a warrant, he emails me and I go right out and get him and get him back in court right away. And then he does this thing in court. So me and him have been working in conjunction with each other for a while. I go out and get him, I see something. Mr. Knight, he gets right on him with a fantastic awesome. job. He's awesome. He's awesome. And then he comes right to me when it's a warrant. He says, okay, John Smith, boom, I go right there. You need to come in a lot, arrest them, bring them in, and then they, they get another court date. And he's here to meet them. For when I give them the other court things. He does a fantastic yeah, job. Does. I he is fantastic. Absolutely. I think we just I need to generate people. What Paul was saying, what, yeah, but how can we condemn these properties? But this is the thing. Like, uh, there are been other, and I watched a huge thing about houses that in another state. It was in a different state, not Camden City, but it was in Colorado. <coughs> and Colorado was having an ongoing issue with houses that were abandoned people they were just walking away from them they were turning sure. into like foreclosures bank owned they had a huge problem and they said it got to the point that now they were turning into either drug houses or people were breaking in they were still well, the this is what they were still whatever at. so they said now they got to the point that the town the town stepped in now granted you have to have, they raised the houses and said now we have a piece of property we put a lien against it now we've got a piece of property it's an empty piece That's of property what doing but it's Detroit. better than a vacant house Detroit is done and there are, there are actual, if I may, there, there's actually an abandoned property statute at the state level. So we dealt with that in the city. So the first thing you have to do is, is it an abandoned property? That's first. Correct. Did they walk away? Are they not maintaining it? Do, you know, to, to, is there a tax? To, 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 there's classifications. Right. And we may not be able to, re, if we keep putting liens on it and nobody buys the lien, then we, get a then we got a problem. Yeah, well, so, that's not happening. In, in the borough right now, just to give an example, we only have how many municipal leads? Maybe 15. And they're all for pieces, most they're of them are pieces. They're not for land. houses. Yeah. So people are paying taxes yes. on these things. So remember, they have the property rights. These people are paying taxes, and usually they're third parties. Well, that's lien holders. The lien holder, the third parties in there. So they want to foreclose a lot of keys turning upside down. Partially, it's very much even if we condemn these homes, we do have to satisfy the tax sale certificate. 
We don't have to. No, but they, they will want But we don't want to have to pay. We don't want to have to pay the lien no, holder. That's 18%. That's what I'm saying. No. Yeah. If there's a walkway abandonment, that's the price with the statute, we would foreclose on ourselves, tear it down and sell it. So municipal right. liens, we can foreclose. Can tax liens, there's something else. I doubt they're in a refund. We still have to pay them. The house was abandoned. It was empty. Suddenly a relative took, took possession of the property. No certificate of occupancy. They took possession. They moved their stuff in. I saw it. I went to Keith. But on the taxes paid. Order a third and read. Yeah, I went, after, I went out there for one. No, Both they, went, they warrants, just took out the see Keith went after him, said, you have to have a CO. You just can't. Who are you? Like, you're just squatting. Like, oh, no, no, it's a relative, like, somewhere around the line. Well, Keith put pressure on him. And after we paid a fit, they just packed up and they left. Now the house is sitting there vacant again. So this is what, this is what. Two Yeah. I'm definitely trying to do something to, to initiate change instead of just billing people and, and like with uh, offering a it's, rip if you tear a house down build a new house five year tax abatement yes you you okay. refinish an old house two standards all got to meet our standards you refinish a, 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 an old building to like a three year tax abatement yeah. That's a there are some rules the county the county has rules on tax abatements we're allowed on commercial properties a phase in of five years you know, if somebody takes a commercial property, they buy it for 100000 they turn it into a $2 million property, that increase in the taxes is phased in. Right. I've been talking about it for Not a while. Did that with Net Express. I, I'd like to do it, but I, I never had an actual lawyer. We need to find it. <laughs> well, we're talking about a residential. Um, our tax assessor's not a big fan of it, but I think it's something I that you do. I think that's an awesome idea. The difference is, what typically, you're only allowed to do the first $25,000. Oh. You're only allowed to do twenty five. dollars for sale and Literally, like for $45,000. I understand. <laughs> but, but the uh, improvement, you can only abate the first $25,000. Remember, we're not the only person who collects the money. I mean, excuse me, who gets the money. We only get 25% of it. We have to share it with, uh, we got to give our VIG to everybody else. Uh, you know, the county gets their cut, the, 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 the two schools. So we're just the mechanism to collect the money. So we can't just all make, these, make these rules. But we can do those two abatements. I've been talking about it just once again. I'm sorry. It's, it's, there's so much work to do. Uh, I've never it's even found the ordinance. Months. I called actually Gloucester Township to give it to me, and they, they never even sent it to me yet. So. Or, 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 or. The abatement uh, thing, because I took I advantage of it idea. when I bought my building, I took advantage of it. And uh, I asked the, one of the clerks over there, and I never got a copy of it. So maybe Joyce will do better than me uh, today. Um, I think we should definitely actively look to try to get a list of okay. the houses. Since I don't want to keep us here till midnight, inventory. we're going to allow, then we'll go to all the members of council and Mr. Bayshore. I know you're very patient. All right. All right. Uh, I gave everybody a copy of my report in writing. It's pretty thick, so I don't need to go through the whole thing. A couple things to point out. We did uh, send the supplemental CDBG application for Washington Avenue to the community development. Uh, I believe they're going to wait until March to make any announcements. To, uh, us. Um, the zoning map that we passed last month, I, I um, gave six copies to Joyce, and I let June know that the copy she had outside her window was outdated, and she says she's aware that the new one was passed, and she was in the process of getting it, the new one. I guess the, this one was under glass, but bigger. It's the new map size, a size yeah. discrepancy. Um, we're done, doing a bunch of proposals for some of the borough properties. Um, I don't need to get into those. We're working on them for the, the lighting and the, the roof at the gymnasium. And it's a bunch of proposals we're working on. Um, that includes South Oakland Avenue. We're going to get proposals to for that. And I'm um, coordinating with Joe Siano for the Irish Holiday Project. We want to get that on, on his list. We have started the... Um, and the EIT sanitary sewer, we talked about that a little bit. Um, some, we what went a sleeve? And, sleeve yeah, we went and mm -hmm. did some yeah, aspects just to get a list of how deep they are for the process. We're going to deal with John and Pat Moriarty to come up with the prioritization list. Um, the Bowers Avenue and Bike Pass Range, I'm at like 95%. We're going to bring them and go to uh, the engineering committee. But I want Steve, to, Steve Bach to look at those first, and he hasn't seen them. Can I ask you a question yes. on that? Um, yes. Mr. Farrell and I were talking about CDBG funds. Does Bower, Bowers Avenue, is that in that zone? Is no. That, you know that. We were going to, we, Bob and I were talking about, like, like, we knew Patty, uh, okay, sorry. We checked that out. So I, I just wanted to see the thing on a couple things before I give those to the committee. Um, 
Washington Avenue, we talked about the uh, change order that we're going to get lens. Uh, opinion on why we have to do the notification or not. And uh, a couple of payment recommendations we had in there. The generator, not to be. The insulate, we had the um, connection done on the 17th. PSC and G, their cabinet was a mess. And our contractor did his best to get it fixed properly. The PSC and G representative on site that day was satisfied with how it was put back together. However, his supervisor saw pictures of it and said he was not happy with it. So we have to have their cabinet. It's their cabinet, but it's our work. So we have to have a second second shutdown, and that oh, is tentatively oh. scheduled for this Saturday, the 31st at 8 a.m. Please know I don't. He just found out. He does now. I will. It You'll coordinate. Kind of, I'm, I'm trying to get, get two officers out there. I'm trying to get one of our inspectors available for Saturday, so that's where. I mean, when did you find this out? When was this? When they did it? When they did the shutdown? Exactly. It's been. It's we've been going back and forth. Reviewed the photos. On yeah. Uh, and they're they're saying it's a policy. PSC and G's, and it has to do with the gauge of the wire that's connected. They need three or four bolts to hold it down. We have two, which is how many was in the previous um, connection. But we upgraded the wiring, and that changed what they are requiring. So we have to shut down, drill some holes, put some bolts in, and power back up. We are also scheduling with that the, the official startup where we start up and test it. And I will, I'm working out a schedule for that as well. I'm trying to find out. Just, just, just keep us posted yes. because. Next, 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 Excuse me, uh, for space short. Yes, sir. I do not know what the weather's supposed to be like on Saturday. Cold. Very cold. Okay. That's My whole point is to say, uh, we have, if we have snow, we're going to postpone this because we were shut down close to nine hours. Well, when we're only supposed to be shut down for three. Correct. So if we have a serious yeah. snowstorm, uh, we need the station up and running. So this is could be a possible problem. Well, could we bring a backup generator to one of our portable ones? You could. <laughs> the, the problem, the, problem is the reason we had a nine hour shutdown is because the problem was in the PSENG box. We had no idea of knowing what that box looked like, especially when we did. Mm -hmm. And even... And PSENG doesn't do the work? Our contractor had to do the work? And it's their box. And it's their box. It has to be shut down. It has to be shut down. So we had no idea what we were getting into. Is this is a long process we're the, looking at? No. For no. Saturday? Is it, this is Saturday, it, I think we're Are we looking for two hours? We're looking for eight hours or ten hours? It sounds like we're just adding more bolts. How many hours? Yes, it does. No, 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 no. Because I was, I came here at 8 30, I came here at 9 o'clock, and I had officers working at 5 30 in the, in the pitch black. It was like a cave. Yeah, when I came in at 5, it was still dark from when I left in the morning. That's terrible. I was here trying to do finance work through in the dark, so I heard had a flashlight. Well, it's not supposed to snow, sir. Oh, we have no choice. We have to get this done. I understand, but I just want to make sure that we don't run into a snowstorm and we're shutting down the building at the same time. You think it's okay? It's, it's, we're not supposed to have snow, sir. It's going to snow when people can Next Thursday is for the next one. So when is the next shutdown? This Saturday. Okay, ready, Paul? See, this is why you come to these meetings. It's good. <laughs> so, uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Payshore. Yes, sir. Are we going to need two officers once again? Because PSCG did not notify us, and we had a scramble to get two officers out there because we had to shut down the traffic on Cummins Patrol. I would figure on two, right? Four hours? I wasn't aware of that. As far as oh, you know? No. Yeah, well, we, we had to shut down when you're shutting down the highway yeah. as it's clean as Cummins Patrol. Can you talk about that? Yeah. yeah. We did. Why, why are you, uh, we nobody Nobody's on that. Figure on two officers. That's, that's, that's why I come to these meetings, too, to find out all this stuff, too. So PC and G calls for the, for the police. Is that what happened? They didn't call. That's the whole point. We had to scramble and get two dots. Oh, God. Do we need to have police out there? Well, sir, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. It's yeah. the traffic. They shut the traffic. Okay. Let's figure out two dots. Some pacing. 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 Some pacing.
Is that what you're up to? Mr. Bates, so what time? So I can let Sergeant Murray know he's our side job coordinator. The, the uh, shutdown is supposed to start at 8 o'clock. Now, is it considered a side job if the borough's paying for it? No, PSEG pays for it. They reimburse it. Oh, they will pay for it. No, they pay. They pay. They pay. They pay. They pay. But do they going to pay for the nine hours? That they pay for a minimum of four hours. It's $10 an hour for each vehicle. They have to pay. So they pay. They'll pay nine hours. They pay how long you have to pay, but it's a minimum of four hours. Bill, they called. They called us, right? They asked for the officers, or did we decide that they need? No, they needed the officers. They said, "Oh well, we forgot." Okay. That happens. We're going at the pizza. We got a bond on my house, so we'll go. All right. I keep going. I'm sorry. All right. That's all right. All right. Uh, I was trying to finalize this schedule. Now we don't notify everybody. <laughs> it's good time. Thank you. Know. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sorry, we had the uh, we talked about the main bond. Let me review that. And the, the sign is up at the public works garage. They put it up. And I, put it the and I forward. I, I also forward those two resolutions to the county, and I'm trying to find out the status of the application for the uh, hazardous discharge site. Uh, Excellent. Uh, I'll show you what you want to find out anything about that. That's, that's it. All, that's all I have other than choice is what I'm talking about. The road opening ordinance. So I don't know if you want to do that now. Or uh, we'll go around and then we'll get back to that because I forgot about that. Sorry, Joyce. Uh, Mr. Ranieri, do you have anything you would like to say? Yeah, a couple of minor things. I've been spending a lot of time at the Harry Williams building for a number of reasons. And um, I've already talked to Rich about this. just want to keep everybody informed. Um, we have power outside of the Harry Williams going towards the sign. We already have power to a couple areas, including the Christmas tree area. I'd like to get an outlet on the sign that's out there. I'm not sure if the, the future sign that we're going to be getting that's automated, whether that's going to be there or not, whether it is or not, we have a sign there now. And after 5 o'clock, you can't see. That's a lot of time people driving back and forth for communication. I'd like to put some floodlights on that or possibly some lights in it. But Rich is going to get a price just to have an electrician send a, send a lot. Just give me 110 right out there by the light. So you don't you guys believe there is electric already? I think there's not. I checked. I checked. There's not. There's been a, is, it, is it an internally illuminated sign or it, it's not? It, 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 no, no, it wasn't designed. But I, it may be able to be done, but I just want one pen. I want an outlet there because okay. I can put some spots on the side. It might be working. Yeah, but I think that I think we'll kind of We need the 110 the for a future sign as well. So he's going to get a price on that or a couple prices. Are we getting a sign there? Are we going and that's the next question. Um, the, the, huh? the, I think that was the plan. The library initiated that. Yeah, I don't think it worked with them. Powers needed, so we're going to get on that right away, whether we get a new sign or not. Yeah. Well, we never, we never put in a bond yet. We need to decide in our bond ordinance if we're going to do it. This is in preparation of anything or existing. So that's going to get done. And then also, Rich and I talked about um, having possibly the same cleaning company that's taking care of the borough bathrooms. They do that once a week. The Harry Williams building once a month to clean that because they're pretty disgusting. Uh, so that will be done. That's. Um, you think once a month is enough? I do. It's not being done well, we now have, at all. We have intermediate. Oh, okay. It's so not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's a deep cleaning. cleaning. So you want to see a deep cleaning once a month? Yeah. 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 Well, I've always said that, that we need to in, increase what we do here. You know, that even this, the company who's doing this, they should do a little bit better. Do you think that they're. You know, they don't really mop all the floors. Like, they don't. I don't think they have a roller as a vacuum. It's just a suction. It doesn't even roll. I'm talking about toilets and urinals and floors. I think it's a good idea. And the floor, stuff like that. Well, I will say that the company that came in was called Service Master. And you remember that was the guy who met us there that day. They cleaned the floor. What yeah, do you think that looked, I think it looked great. I think that looked good. We still need a new floor. But I have that sometimes. But I think it looks pretty good. Well, they did a good job. We they should give them the opportunity first. Probably. They're, they're, they're right. But we could always get another price from another company. You know. Uh, you know, we'll see what we, we get. Yes, you know, I'm sure they give us a good price. They want to continue to do our work, right? Yeah. There you go. See, this is what I like. Nothing, not just finding. There it's you anything. go. Thank you. What else? And uh, Beverly, can we get a? Uh, unless there is one that I haven't seen. For all the bottles and the, 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 the you know recycled bin outside here, because there's nothing. I think, they're, I think they're going in the trash, I'm not sure. But uh, something out there, it would be too intrusive in here. But probably right out here by the table would be nice. Maybe a trash can. Do they have little ones? Maybe something nicer for inside, right? 
Is there room? Where is there room? Where would you put it? I just always see those blue hands. Those blue hands. We were talking about this the other day, and we need to come up with a way with the other ones because it, it is not reasonable to expect employees from either the police department, court, or finance to carry 50 pounds worth of recycling cans out to a dumpster. Why would they do that? Uh, I'm just saying, right now, what we have is... That's what we have, we have 55 cans. Oh, no. But we would like, and I would like next to my desk, not a trash can, but a nice little... Oh, give me some additional one, like more than one. Like water bottles in or whatever. You have a dozen of them. But what I would like us to be able to do is to put it into one of the rolling ones on wheels. That, you know, that can be put back outside. So, because it goes into... We so are you saying in addition to the one I'm requesting, you want more? Okay, six. Yeah, well, that, that'd be wonderful, but, but we can put this room on top of that. How's that? Who's doing it? It's going to come out. It's, it's up the building here, so I guess... It's a couple of trash cans. I just want one to make me happy. You want more of this? Good. One's good. Why? Well, Who's getting that? Are you going to get that? Okay, cool. Yeah, but I, I think what, what Rich is, like I said, the office that now I've taken over, I have a little trash can, and I said, I want a recycling can. You know what I got? <laughs> no, and I'm like, I, I just want to be able to throw my paper away. I think we can get a trash can where you cycle. But, 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 but here's the argument: there's no need to empty. That's the problem. There's, we need something. We need a coordination. What we're just saying: we, we go we empty it somewhere. We're we're all this generates a lot of. Are you talking about the whole building? It's the whole building. Right. Right. It's, it's, right. right. it's the process. Once it was every other week. Did they, the reason the cans are so big is because even the borough was on the every other week schedule because that's how we've always done it. And we're trying not to do, we're trying not to go forward with the always done it. Well, the little receptacle out in the hall will probably change. We probably can't put it the hallway though. Yeah. There's probably some sort of co-pilot. I don't know about that. There's a table out there. I've seen benches and well, stuff. We'll it just makes sense. We recycle. We should put our own bottles away. The hallway's very bored. You get on that for the RY too. Let them know about recycling. If I see it, I'll let them know. Yeah, let them know because they don't ever recycle, and they should. Yeah. What's that? Why? PRY. That's a big thorn in my they, side. It's been a thorn in my side for two years. They put them in the cans, and then they take the cans over, and they dump them right in the dumpster. The only way that, that, the the only way the recycling is going to work at that facility, or in this building, or anywhere else, is somebody has to empty <coughs> those cans every single day. You know, once again, I keep talking about my own office. I have an employee who empties the stinking can. I have a dumpster in the back of my building. Every, twice a week, somebody walks around and empties the damn cans. It's the only way to do it. Even in this building, the only way we don't get, we get away from these 50 gallon cans is somebody has to have a mechanism to get it out into there. But once again, whose job is it? Is it the chief of police's job? Is it the... Can we just make that decision now? Because I would say, I don't know I don't think we can. Timmy had that health benefits, you must take the recycling center. Is this something we got to work on? In the meantime, we'll get a can. Yeah, absolutely get a can. <laughs> That's not a problem. Okay. Oh, That's all I have. Okay. okay. We'll do this. Kelly. Okay, the DARE uh, program has started already, and uh, that's going uh, very well with uh, Officer Burns and Mr. Ward. And then we have our bike patrol that's going to start up in May. So that's uh, something to look forward to. Um, do you remember on television when they had the shoplifting incident at CBS and mm -hmm. Officer Murray um, was able to struggle the man down and arrest him? Well, CBS is going to honor him at a, an upcoming council meeting, and I'm going to coordinate that with you, Chief. Yes. And uh, so we'll, into, so we'll be looking forward to that, that. <laughs> yes. we'll be forward to that uh, honor up. coming up. Uh, we have not heard back from Barrington and Haddon Heights yet on their shared service agreement because we did pass our resolution, we sent it to them, and we're just kind of waiting for them to get back to us on that. And um, the two new cars are coming at the end of February. Um, we do have a new vendor for our e-tickets, RMS. And um, tomorrow a, demonstra a demonstration will be held for the video cameras in the cars. As you know, um, that would be a mandated thing for all our cars eventually. So we're, we're just getting prices and looking to see what's going on with that. Did we change our menu? What time is it tomorrow? Uh, what time is I think 3 o'clock. I emailed you. Or, uh, I won't be able to make it, Paul. I know. And, John, I just got your email, so I'll, it's 3 o'clock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got it? I, I emailed you. You're going to go, 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 go,
Kind of short notice. Someone's gone. Kind of short notice. I wanted to go. We'll talk. Uh, okay, the fire department, the public safety committee, is yes. going to be meeting with the officers and trustees of the fire company at the firehouse, and that's going to be within the next couple of weeks. I gave you didn't make a date yet. No, no date yet. Uh, we're going to be looking at that facility. You know, we rent that every year for all our equipment. And we also have people staffing in that house 24-7, 365 days a year. There's no showers. The bunk room is one bunk room for all the women and men that are there 24-7 throughout the year. There is no elevator up to the second floor, so that wonderful room up there is not being used. And the lighting in the main area of the firehouse is so poor and so dim that it's difficult for the men to do their thing in there. So who, who owns it, Mrs. Tom? The lighting in the firehouse. Now, who owns there. the building? They do, the fire company. Oh, I thought you said they rent it. We rent it from them. Oh, we rent it from them. We pay 40000 a year, we rent, we rent this space for a truck. It's sort of like an aid to fire, the volunteer fire company. Is that what we call it? It's a housing. Yeah. In other there words, are trucks, it's our equipment, our air packs. And our, our employees. Because the EMS, yeah, or right. the part drivers that come in for EMS, are our employees. <laughs> and so we're going to be looking at the bunk room facilities and, and whatever needs that they have. Not to say that we are going to do these projects, but at least get the discussion out there. I think we have to talk about it. If we're going to continue to use this building and keep, keep our people there, we want to at least give them facilities. If, if, can I pay you to you want to pay that? If I may on that, um, I, I just don't know. The, the, the process that they're very well aware of, and I know John, the president's aware of it, the chief is very aware of it, and all of our department heads are also now aware of it. Um, and we talked about it briefly at the last council meeting, but in the past, we just threw things out there. And they need to put their needs through the chains of command through the budget process. So, and, and they're a little bit different because they, they do, they own the building themselves yes. and yes. then they rent it to us so there are things that we do for them. We, we pay for the, we assisted with the air ventilation handlers. We, get, we pay for the filters for them. We, we, for we've increased the cable you know, siphon that we give them because we run our time systems through their cable. So we've enhanced things that were directly related to us. Um, but every year they prepare a budget request and they send that budget request over and it comes through the budget process. And I think that last year you started to, to sit down with them and, and no one's saying not to do that. Just saying that their needs will come through as a capital need request. And, and again, we're doing things different than in the past. So while we wouldn't enhance the bar area that they might use for a rental, you know, the lighting in the, the engine bay you know, is something that would be reasonable. So, so obviously those requests should go through. And again, if, because it's a dual head, it's a dual organization, even the the company side needs to send their request through the budget process, and they can call it fire company if they want. So, but that is where all the departments needs you know, need to well, be planned. I, the reason the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I will be meeting with them. Okay. And um, Patty and John are both going to be with me. Okay. I would like you to come to that meeting. It'll be in the firehouse, and okay. we want to walk around and see exactly what they're talking about. And I'm not opposed to them doing everything, but I think. By all means, but Harry Williams takes precedent over everything. That's a community. Oh, sense. I, I just want. But there to might be certain I, things that are like a safety issue. Like once fine. again, but we're having a new a, a new fire truck put in there. I know that if you guys spend five thousand dollars for lights. What I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is that we're trying to work is, with. Is put the discussion out there. Fine. I'm very good at putting together proposals. But I mean, I think this isn't for. This is the company side. So, they go together. So I think yeah. if it has to do with the fire trucks and running the EMTs out of there, there might be a reason why we might put new lights in there. We might sure. fix the garage door opener because we can't get our trucks out if the garage door opener is broken. Absolutely. And, and when Rich was saying the, uh, the air cleaners were put in there, if I recall, we got grant money for part of that. So sometimes we're working in conjunction with the, the volunteer fire company to get grant that paid for a portion, and then we did our matching part or whatever we did to 
than when the trucks are in there. Well, I just want the discussion. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Well, that's and exactly how things get done. Yes, that's how things get yes. done. And, and yeah. you, you only start moving once you start to Yes. Yeah, me too. Ms. Pascal, are you? Oh, yes. I have all words. Ten days. I will you to report at the council uh, meeting. I have, I have one question. Oh. This goes to the chief. Yes. Um, I like the idea of a bicycle, but the police. Yes. But when they're on, or additional, you're not taken away from car police, are you? No, no I am not, Mr. Farmer. It's all over, right? No, no. I mean, I, as I, you can well see, I'm not a white officer, but it's all in common. The razor ships on. Don't worry, we'll get out there. I don't think we hit all the areas. No, I love it. I think it's a great idea. I would say that we had almost, I would say, we had nine shifts when we instituted police shift on Saturday. Yeah, I know. 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 I a drug arrest on the bike path, like right in front of the resident who thought it was the greatest thing on earth. Now, oh wow, now I can walk freely down here. So I made it known that there's not going to be any, anything tolerated on the bike path. All of a sudden, you didn't see any kids loitering there. It's the best thing. I'm so glad we brought it back. Well, so, and it's, it's only going to get better and better. Yes. I, yes. I think it's did, great. Yeah. Sorry, did you tackle anyone? <laughs> I, I, I told you for a while. We'll leave that to Officer Murray. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in Speedos. Uh, I am going to hold off until uh, actually just want to no I'm going to hold off until the council meeting. All right, uh, we got our CDBG grant check uh, Thursday night from the freeholders and uh, which uh, helped us do Washington Avenue and uh, I don't know if you've seen Washington Avenue it's, it looks looking great, great. Looking yes uh, looking forward to getting a Another street done with this year's uh, CDBG money. Uh, also, the freeholder meeting, uh, our Mayor Nick talked to uh, Luke Capelli about uh, the flashing light at St. Teresa's, and uh, he got a call the next morning, and uh, we're beating Thursday. So, I'm not going to be there. No, he's not going to be He's going to be eating some good food somewhere, right? <laughs> Engineering's going to go. Engineering's going to go. Me and Patty are going to go. Actually, Rich and I have a different meeting, so you know, are you? But you'll tell them I'm not there when I don't show up. Okay, and I was going to mention uh, the buildings, but uh, and you're the CDBG right now. Just to let everybody know, uh, Mike is going. To, uh, look at Mike. Bob's going to go to the CDBG money, even though we, you know, we, 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 a little confused. Whenever they come, they basically quarterly now. They're doing it at the uh, Voorhees Town Center. Bob's going to go to those meetings and find out, you know, what, what we can do with that money. And then the backup, I think, is John. Is that right? <laughs> so I just have, oh, who's my backup for Jim? Oh, I have something else. Too. Me, I'm your backup for sure. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. We didn't change that. Yeah. Okay. I, this is, uh, you were upstairs, John, fixing up here. Yeah. Today. Uh, that's great. Uh, how much more do we need to get done so we can use that as a functional room? I don't think we need anything more than, um, well, we have heat. We have everything we need. We just need, I think, uh, some chairs and uh, um, just a couple file, tables, file cabinets. It'd be nice. I'm thinking, you know, something to make it look professional. File cabinets so we can get rid of all our stuff at home and have everything up here. That's Mr. a great idea. Uh, may I give the oh, yeah. point? Mr. Wright and I have talked about we, chairs we, we looked at chairs for up there, um, and we had a simple solution that was staring us right in the face until we get something permanent, which will happen quickly because I get a phone call every day asking about it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we put the, the election folding chairs around. And it's not perfect, but we can sit up there. So at least it's progress to that degree. And here's the plan. Rather than buying new chairs and putting them upstairs for something that's going to get low use, not, not no use, but low use, the recommendation, and I think it's a good idea, is to put these chairs up in the conference room. And since the use between court and all the events is down here, if we replace these chairs. Good idea. Right? So. Nicer chair here. Yeah. Good idea. So, so that is the plan. We're going to get really? votes. And we're, I, also, I, 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 and we're also looking at the options for material. Draw up leadership. Different color. The chairs behind you are also falling apart. So we, what we're going to do on that is, since it's, it's not going to be a super purchase, but we are going to have them come out and Bring us the so reps gonna come in. We're not gonna look at a picture in a book and then you get it gets here as a cheap. Who did you call? You gotta remember that we need to fold these up. Yeah, I know. And uh, yes. who did you call? 
We're going to have, um, when we have an election in here, all these chairs have to These get folded? Uh, they all stack. They all stack. And they also require to be attached. For now, exactly. So, and, yeah, like and then the other thing was, uh, there's an opportunity. Uh, one of the things that I think we really ought to do is put a, uh, a screen on there so that we can have a PowerPoint presentations. And then what it allows us to do is our training here also. So I think it would help the court too, correct? If there was a screen, would that help the court? Absolutely, Mr. You know, Mr. But then this way, if there's a, how much would we have a good budget, budget presentation where we could show things? If we could join, join meetings, sure. training, and then if the chairs are movable, we could set the chairs up so we could do training. Right. We've done that a few times. Remember, Patty, we've been here for training for council members, yeah. and then I think public works has used this whole building. Can we this room? I think we yeah, could. Can we please move the clock? to there and put a flag there so we don't all turn around. You know what the problem is? I've been paying attention. Everybody has the, the, the flags are always behind mm -hmm. the hey, judge. Don't stand up and turn it's our back on everybody. I know, but it's 565 places and the flag is there. What I will agree with, and I think that you're right with me, is if we, we talked about the chief is looking at security cameras, which we can't figure out why that camera's facing there and this camera's facing you, uh, you know, we're looking at the cameras, <laughs> but one of the thoughts is if that emergency lighting was moved, it does allow us maybe to put something a little bit more borough grounded up there. Yeah. I think you know, we know, it's something we don't have. Yeah. We need something up there. Picture the chief. By you know painting it picture, and picture, 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 maybe somebody picture, would donate like a sign. Like a a portrait. <laughs> oh my God! Portrait. <laughs> like the king. Am I still <laughs> up? Yes, you are. All right, we got. Uh, uh, Mike uh, looked into these lights uh, for uh, in town anyway, and he wanted me to do it, but he did all the work, so uh, let, well, let him do it. As the, uh, uh, for the engineering committee, I spoke to uh, Senator Cruz Perez at the freeholding meeting, and uh, they have, they've been getting complaints about Clemens Bridge and the Black Horse Pike. Uh, traffic wise, just traffic, just total too much traffic and all and uh, no turning lanes. And uh, so what uh, she recommended, we can start investigating. Now, we're gonna have to work with the, the state and Camden County. Uh, we pay 20% of any investigation and or work. We're, uh, we're responsible for 20%. Camden County is 40%. The state is 40%. So if what we're in the committee, we're, next committee meeting we have, we're gonna talk about it. Uh, maybe if we want to proceed with uh, alternate lighting or something for, they can't be wide. Clemens Bridge can't be wide. Street lights or yeah, traffic, 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 traffic. traffic The, the Clemens Bridge and Black Horse Pike can't be wide at this point. One, we can't pay 20% of what that's going to cost, first of all. Uh, but um, there's got to be something, because when what's happening is when a car is making a left hand turn, a, a car can't get beyond it to go straight. So if you got the first car, our first two cars making a left in rush hour, you're, you're nobody's moving. Yeah, you get two, yeah, no, two cars, sure. three cars get through that lane. And and your person behind them going straight gets... Wow. Yeah, I, I've been up on that curb. I ride up on that curb. Yeah, yeah. But, um, so if we we want to look into this, you know, we'll, we'll talk with Bob and um, see what, what we can do. Like, oh, like yeah. uh, Ms. Cruz Perez mentioned the alternate lighting where where the, uh, yeah, well, this will, you know, the, the eastbound or east side would go first, then the west side would go for the second. This way, anybody wants to make a left, they can make a left, and the traffic flows. Yeah, they, they won't give you a, a left hand turn unless you have a left hand lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so, we don't have that room. Well, yeah, if you have the third car going straight, he can't do nothing, so exactly. the third car to go. So it would have to be, I think our only option would be alternate lane. And it's a good time to look at this since you're going to do Columbus, uh, Columbus Bridge. Yeah. And what, what that takes, you know, again, I, we have to um, sit down and see if we want to put some money into. Like if we do, the, if we do the flashing signal over here by St. Teresa's, is that going to be 20, 40, and 40? Yeah. Well, I don't is know. that for the investigation or is that for the project? That's for every project. Yeah. So if you do the investigation, we're up for 20%. If we do the um, work, no, this, so I, I don't think we fall under that. That's, this is more of the county. This here, the county knows there's problems. 
What towns do you said had it, Nick? You said there's a couple of towns that already had those flashing lights. Which was Barrington. Falls, Jersey. Barrington has it on Clemens Ridge Road. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. I don't, I, I don't know that as a thing. It's a traffic common. We have a great challenge here. I think Clemens High School just put it out there. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. They narrowed the curve. Yeah. 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 Woodbury, by the courthouse in Woodbury. There's one there, too. There. Uh, but something complicated because it's us going to the county. Yeah. Or all involved. Well, you definitely noticed the in front of St. Teresa's. It's us going to the county. And the county. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, well, East Sham is a county, county road. road. Right? I don't know, I'm assuming Black Horse Pike is a state, state road. State, yeah. So that's why the state's involved. Oh, and Connors Bridge. Oh, and Connors Bridge. But on East Sham and St. Teresa's Lake. It's just county yeah. and, and two county towns. And Gloucester right. County. So that's why the county's going to meet the engineering no, committee. If they, I know this is out there, but if they, maybe Mark Chris, if they decide to do it, do we get a bill for 20%? Or is it if we initiate it, we get a bill for 20%? Or for the one county side? No, if we're going to make it. I'm, I'm thinking if we initiate it. Well, then it's our cost. Yeah, yeah. Pay so what they do in that person? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think it, it, that's not just down to right. the board. That's what we initiate. What could an alternate writing, what could it possibly, within a, a, a ballpark, what could that possibly cost? Alternating lighting. Well, the issue is probably not the year. Well, so, we don't know. Well, this is probably have to upgrade the entire lighting system because anytime you want to change it, ballpark. Ten? Not more than that. Twenty? Twenty thousand? So, so, so our I've seen shopping centers. <laughs> You've seen shopping centers put lights in. It costs them one hundred fifty thousand dollars. It costs us about four grand. No, more than that. Uh, no, our ten, our twenty percent. No, more than that. If it's just a study, right? I think they want to just a study. Study and well, I, I would think it has how it's how the study comes out. I'm thinking. Okay. You know, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's really needs it. That doesn't hurt to. Yeah, you know, and I'm not saying because I use it, but it, sometimes Clemens Bridge is backed up from Mine Street yeah. at the park. Yeah, yeah. You know, but there's yeah. something yeah. wrong on 42. Because we're a three, we're a through town. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Something's wrong on 42. They're coming down the pike. They might not have to get out of town because the cabinet can't. Okay, they might have to get the cabinet. Why do you look at it? A hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. I've seen shopping centers that have been using it. All the, all the rest the 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 Helps the county, helps us. Mike, did you have anything else? I just want to say, working on the coal barn, I got the prices for the uh, electric. Are you ready to make a recommendation on the electric? I, I am. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, I was going to wait till Tuesday. Tell everybody down there. Well, the, the three bids I got were, and this way we'll, we'll prove this on Tuesday night. Unless you need to approve it. Why don't we do it Tuesday night? Well, that's why you guys pay attention. We're not talking about lights. We're talking about lights. What are we doing? Mr. Rude is going to get a proposal. We're trying to catch up on this. I know I'm engineering committee, but I don't know anything about this. So I'm just trying to get That's why we have these meetings. <laughs> okay, the three prices I received for the electric for the uh, pole barn. We, we originally designed to go out with a new meter <coughs> and we were looking at prices of $17,000, which I thought was a little, a little expensive for what we're doing. So then uh, talking to a couple of contractors, we decided to go hop off of the existing electric in the, in the RYA building, go through the building underneath, come up and have a sub panel box, a sub box. So this way, because there's not enough, there, it really doesn't need that much electric to, to supply this building. The biggest thing is the heat, and that's gas, so it just needs a little bit of uh, electric for it. And um, the, the I'm a, I, I have a five dollar difference between the cheapest and the second cheapest, but uh, from talking to the other two contractors, the second or the, the cheapest uh, lighting isn't the same. It's very subpar, it's the cheapest lighting out there. It meets what we need, but it's it, they don't feel, both of them agree, the other two don't feel that um, it's not suitable for what we want for the athletics, you know, to be down there. So I'm gonna recommend going with JBK Electric. It was five hours more, but the lighting itself, which is, is the major part of the, of the um, you know, you're looking at $3,000. 
Huh? What kind of fixtures? Uh, these are 60 amp, 240, wait a second, sorry. 42 watt E, Connell light, um, LED fixtures. And it's going to be like a, like a fluorescent light, long ones, but they're going to be uh, protected. And because of the LED and what they are, they will take abuse. Now, the Don Washington, Sorry, but the uh, cheapest one, I don't know how to say his name. We did local was, vendors. Yeah, <laughs> he was doing an LED, just a 36 yeah. watt load, 12 it's like a request so, for proposal, you know, not a bid. So it's not, yeah. it's not going to take the abuse that the other lights. And what was the cost? Did you never give us a number? Five dollars less? Oh, no, it's total less. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you the, can I say the range or not? Just that say the amount. The highest was 10,100. Second was 91.95, and the cheapest was 92. I, or, I'm sorry, it's the opposite. Close. 92 and then 91.95 was the cheapest. But I recommend we go with JBK for proposal. Yeah, proposal wise, because of the weight. Yeah, it's under the bid threshold. It's above the 3,000 for three quotes. Yeah. Do you need authorization from council? It's, the money's already there, right? Well, I'm so for, yeah, this part is part, this part of the budget. What is the twenty five thousand on the cabinet? No, that's well. Oh, that's well. Yeah. That's all we spent that before that we got so, a big check. I don't believe it requires this. this is okay, it's just part of it. So everybody knows about it. We'll just approve it and we'll hire that company. Okay. And actually fine. just to, to clarify that, when you do you well, you don't do it anymore, sorry. I don't do yeah, it anymore. I sign off clarification of funds. The department head signs off on you know, okay, the purchase order. And then from the director's point of view, the department director signs off on it, and then the finance director signs off on it. So there's still council approval on, on that sure. side. So Mike, when is the uh, pole barn going to be done? Well, they're uh, being held up a little bit by weather, but they're yeah. moving pretty good. They're, they're working on the walls. I can't imagine them being there another week once they get back. I think I don't think they showed up today. I didn't go over there today. But I'm like, yeah, you know what, it did. And they didn't show up today. So I imagine the, the weather held them up. So I'm thinking maybe three to five more days of, of working on the actual pole barn. And uh, actually, the, all three of these guys were ready to go. They can start now because they have to do work in the old building to connect it. And um, so they can, they can start now. And then when that's all ready to go, they can just tap into it. So will the pole barn be ready to go for opening day? Oh, uh, well, well, we're going to be ready, I'm hoping, by the middle of February for winter workouts. So and, when, and what, 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 what are you going to do with these? <coughs> yeah, what, what it's, are it's, it's, there's two, there's two oh, batting cages are going to be in there, and a pitching tunnel, and all of it can be moved to the side for soccer uh, workouts. Or even just an open air. Who pays for the electrical? Or why it out? Yeah, operating expense, yeah. Like I said, it should be the people who are running it. We still have to meet with them. I know Mike's met with them in the bridge. You know, this way they have some, some skin in the game. They don't just leave the lights on. Right? They have to not turn the lights on. Right. You know, we're putting the money on. Who's going to maintain this building? Well, it's a borrowed building, so we're oh. going to have to start figuring all this out. Oh. So we got lights, we got floor. No. I mean, what? What's left to do though? With lights, no. a floor. Well, we just got once the electric gets done, <coughs> just the floor. And then you have to do. The and then the heating. And the, heat heat the heating, it can go. And you know, we're not too. The kids wear sweatshirts. Is the current contract for putting the doors in and the, and the garage doors? So it'll be closed up when they leave. Yeah. Wow. yeah. I found the guy's number for the. For Did you? Yeah. He uh, was on. He was on Lakeview Drive. Yeah. I found his card, and then I forgot to bring it. Okay. Good. So. I gotta get that guy. Yes. Yeah. It was light to be dry, right? The, uh, the, the, what Nick's talking about is our uh, the turf for the uh, inside of the building. Uh, the, the lowest guy was the first guy who was very strapped. I don't even know how to explain this guy, but he was just wired for sound. And he called, he actually ran this into the public meeting that you know. yeah. <laughs> didn't We got the price already. We're good. We can't make it any higher. But um, I it just I could I, I misplaced this guy's number and Nick met, met him a couple times for a day. Yeah, he called him the Dick of Potters. We've got your last name. We're not going to comment. Let's move on. Yeah, I put it. Everything's good and uh, it's going good. Everything's going good. Um, I'm going to start working on softball the rest of the project. Thank you. Uh,
There was only something that that that, uh, that uh, Ms. Pinto had brought up that we forgot about. I apologize again for all this stuff. There was a question, and I forgot to print out the email. Uh, we passed an ordinance for road openings, and we passed an excellent ordinance for road openings. We we borrowed. Right. We did a great job with it, and I will say that it has. Not that it was intended to generate income, but it did generate $18,000 from the utility companies because they did not believe Ms. Pinto when she sent them a letter saying you must get a bond or you have to pay us to open up the roads. Good, good. So now, way to go, Joyce. now they, they Ms. Pinto, correct, they did now have bonds, all, so now they can open the, 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 you know, the roads up without giving us money. The problem is we do have residents who want to build they are questioning some of the language. Now, I don't know if this is an interpretation of the ordinance by us, or we need to amend the ordinance. The question is, if someone is building a house in the town, and they have to tie the sewer in, tie the water in, mm -hmm. is it $5,000 per? That's how your current ordinance reads. And do we get to keep the money? That's how your current ordinance in my in my in that's how it reads. Yeah. I don't believe that was the intent. Correct? No. Per, 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 no. per hole or per per hole? Per hole. Per hole. Well, it, per hole does Did I print it out? Is per hole. I have, I have now, a portion of it here. Yeah, you, want me, you want me to give my opinion here? Yes, yes sir, please. This is a letter. This is a rarity, please. He's actually going to throw it in. The question came up because he wanted to get gas, water, and electric. But since it's a homeowner's one, I think you should just get a wider oh, area. Mm -hmm. Just pay the one permit to get the five thousand. But he's just got to do one patch as opposed to three separate patches. Because if he's going three separate patches of a four by four here, a four by four, and another four by four, that's three different openings and that's fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Whereas if he did a final restoration that they connected all the holes. Now let's be clear why this is happening. If the roadway in which the street opening is being made is less than five years old, since it was last paid, the, and improved and improved, the fee will be five thousand dollars paid by all applicants for any permit for each opening or excavation to any public street roadway. This was a mechanism to try to stop people from tearing up the roads that we yeah. just we did. And, it, and it's, it's been happening five, it's a, a five, lot. It's a five-year moratorium. It's been happening a lot. Yes. Um, well, it's not just for, util for utilities, because I did ask that question. Well, what this does is this is really an impediment for somebody who's going to build a house. Yes. Five thousand dollars. That's, that's how they did, 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 did Mr. And uh, the letter we have is, uh, yeah. this is from ERI Associates. It's uh, Pine Avenue, which is a new street. Thank you for reminding me, Pine Avenue was repaved on 2001 Road Program after further review of the ordinance. There is REED's $5,000 fee to be paid at all applicants for each open. It's $15,000. Yeah. We don't have a legal counsel to tell us. That was so they, what they could do is present a road that, uh, restoration I plan. Did I walk the dog down there? Whoever, whoever owes it, I think, I don't know if John ever sees this, but they could show the three separate openings, but then have the restoration cover the whole area. Then that would just be one opening. And even, though there's, even though there's going to be three separate holes, if they restore the whole area. Let's mm -hmm. be clear why we did this. We spent. Two hundred thousand dollars oh. to repay the pond it your heart. to get it all torn up. But at the same time, we want people to fix their houses or build houses. This is up to council. But it, it, currently, the way I read the ordinance, it's per opening, and it's five thousand dollars not a really It was designed. You remember, it was, it, we took it to really stop people from just well, actually, it was meant to stop the utility companies. Can it not stop the do right. So can it not so be specific, like, specific to say utilities will pay X amount of dollars to open the road, but if it's in the improvement of the homeowner to whatever for building purposes or updating purposes, that the, it can be a less that, that, that might not be equal protection under the law. That would be treating people differently. That would be tough. Really? Because well, they're still just yeah, hooking up separate, the utilities. There are separate fees, whether it's a homeowner. And remember, it takes, once again, council has to propose an ordinance, it has to be read, it has to be publicly, it takes two months. I know. So you're saying you're allowing a whole brand new road. It's still the utility company. I'm not saying that. We're already on Orchard, and they have to fix the gas leak. Yeah. 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 Y
Did they do a great job of patching it? No. No, it was a worse awful. job on Third Avenue across from Gold School. Yes, they did. And now it's a gigantic sinkhole, like a big hole. Well, and the Orchard Avenue looks like that too. It's because terrible. they do it. I awful. turned into John. John Gunn is reaching out to them. I asked him about his connection. Beautiful he street. Said, and beautiful street. 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 Beautiful isn't there better material you can use on a patch? Well, we did. Why is it sinking? Why is it? Because it wasn't backfilled properly. Yeah. And we don't want them just dumped in. Much like the one on Bad, much like the one on Third Avenue that the water company opened. They opened it up because there was a water leak. They opened up the hole. They filled it. It sank. They came back. They fixed it again. It sank again. And now finally they fixed it and it's good. Was there a second? I just said, somebody actually told me two major days if they let it be seen as a piece of the and it was tearing up the place. And it was tearing up the place. And it was tearing up the place. They just came back and said, well, we did. Have you seen it? The burn. I told her that she said, you know, it's a place. They had, like, how many days of the burn? Oh, it's telling you if you get the road in five hours. So, I'm going to go to the five years. Less than five years. Less than five years. Okay. As far as I know. See, and on Pine, we just did Pine. Pine was just here. Yeah. And then I, got this one. I think, uh, okay. actually, the escrow, we got the same question. In the old days, we used to stay to 11. Good for you. Um, <laughs> we're always welcome to leave. I want to make this clear. Uh, Everybody is welcome to leave whenever they want to leave. That's why you need to be here. That's right. Everybody can leave. Actually, I like Mr. Pacer's solution because we could change the ordinance, but then it. The intent of the ordinance was to stop people from tearing up brand new roads. Yeah. But I think if you're saying if there was a plan that showed it's considered one opening, I, I think that that's a way to do it. Now, it is still a $5,000 fee, but you know what? Uh, you got somebody building a new house for getting taxes. You know what I mean? For you know, you ever build a house? If you build a house, you have to go to the CCMUA and get a permit to connect to the sewer. Do you know how they determine the, the, the connection fee? They, they started off when they built the CCMUA. Do you know this? When they built the CCMUA, there was a, there was a certain fee. Because I built several houses. And that was the fee. And every year it went up. You know why it went up? Because they added the bills that they weren't collecting from that piece of property. So the, the connection fee now to connect to a house is like $10,000, where it used to be $2,000. There is a cost to building houses. Sewer connection fees, the borough has a sewer connection fee. Street opening permits. The, I mean, the only reason we did this was because new roads getting just to protect those new After homes. the 70s. You know, I'm sad about it. I don't want to stop people from building a new house. It's a beautiful street. But I think the five five thousand dollar doing is penalizing them for tearing over our roads. So that they come back a beautiful new road like Pine. But see, that, that's penalizing it them is. for building a house. But it wasn't intended for building a house. It was intended to penalize people who were tearing up our roads to do, to do work, to do utility work. Right. right. So, so again, why can't you make it a lesser amount? Yeah. Okay. It takes two months. Council has to approve. That's okay. Then let's make it a lesser amount for, for people that are doing the home, yeah. but residential use. If it's for residential use, we have to, you know, pay sure. Whatever the I'm not doing it. Whatever the verb is. I need an amendment to that ordinance that makes it more powerful. Like What's whatever power? Whatever the verbiage is for it to be twenty five hundred dollars for a homeowner to do it, then. That's half the cost. But this is and not a home. Home. This is a builder. No, yeah. no I understand. But right. No, but he's building a home. But building yes. a home. Right. If it's building doing a, a home. residential thing, we don't want to punish really people building homes. No. Right. So if it's for a residential thing, we just amend it to say new construction. And you know, we can do anything. We can do anything. Well, why is it, you know? What about the escrow? It's a new road. 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 Houses. Don't build in front of me. You don't want that. We're, we're, talking, we're talking about two issues here. Um, the one with the utility. The utilities are required to give us an escrow deposit. We'll take their money. And we're, if we have something where it's been not fixed properly, we're giving them their escrow back. 
we can keep that escrow yeah. and we can Until use it and we'll pay for it to get fixed properly Until ourselves. That's what we did on half. On so, that's what we do all the time. Right. That's what we've always deferred. Right, right. right. Um, yeah, but we're talking we're about. Just it's all coming together. That's the problem. This right. ordinance, yeah. we're just, we're, the only thing we missed in this ordinance was new construction. We never thought that someone was going to build a house on pine well, or put a house why on can't, Why can't we do it with new construction? And you didn't talk about it. Instead of charging them five thousand dollars, it's a five thousand dollar escrow account. You do it properly. You do patch that road tire properly. You get the next year or the two, whatever it is, you get your money back. Or of course, but they're never passed hundred percent. The seam is always a seam. Well, always. then they don't get it. And we got we got to fix it. That escrow account. We you take the money out of the escrow. Well, the only thing is, is when do they want to build this house? They want to get started. I don't know. I don't know. He, uh, Mark talked to Valencia. I just wanted the interpretation of it. Yeah. I said that was my interpretation. You told me. Well, it's, it's the correct interpretation. But I, didn't, I didn't talk to him about it. I just thought of treating it as small and restoration. Well, the only thing I'd maybe suggest to council, if Lynn was here, or maybe you would suggest adding a line to that ordinance that allows for new construction to pay a Less smaller good. amount. What's that amount? $2,000. dollars i would say half is reasonable. Yeah, Twenty-five hundred. Okay. We'll do first reading. Because you know as much as that opening one whole sound. Joyce, you get to figure out going to hook up This is going to hook up way. Take it away. That's going to hook up way. I know. This is Mark, so I don't know where you are to put this out. Maybe we get, you know, Steve or Lenny. Yeah, what she's saying is they're redoing the whole street. What do you want to do? I want to do that. I'll do our best. We'll let John know that we're working on it. Right. Well, I'm not going to do it. That's Mark talking. Well, what do you think? Will you talk to John Rice? Or should we have the three holes? Do you mind? No, he's, Mark said we're, we're it's better to have one large hole. hole. That's the restoration. That's better to have yeah. one large that, hole than it is, is to have three. Right? No. What do you this think? This is a real estate. Do you estate want the restoration height? Or do you want the three holes? Did you see that? You didn't have the bills to come to you. It was a lot of money. Yeah. Somebody called me, but I, I just answered the question. I think they should do a restoration. I don't know what it's good for. Do you think it's strong, honey? That's what that's going to be. Uh, two, you know, seven two guys five. on a conference call. Right. But you have to, we have to make that specific. So you don't know if it's strong. They might have to see that. Is it wide? Is it wide? Is it wide? What's that? It's mid. I know. What is our normal? Does it, does it say what our normal street opening permit is? If somebody just does a street opening on a house that's on a road that's not? Oh, it's a calculation. It's a non returnable fee and a third escrow. It's probably high too. All right, Rich is out of coffee. I went as Lynn. Um, street, that was the last thing. Okay, I don't know. Is that okay? Okay, uh, go to offer this portion of the meetings over to the public. Any one of the five of you wish to speak? Please <laughs> <laughs> um, give us your name and address. Yes, uh, Craig Wallen, sign 40 Mitchell Avenue. One thing on the recycling with the RY and the RGSL, you need dedicated cans. I was on board of both. If they have a can that has a small thing on the top, Pat, you brought me down the cans mm -hmm. at the uh, salt mm -hmm. and. You know, I tried to get people to recycle. I would tell the cup. I would tell. The cup. I tried to get you the lids. Yep. Yeah. And I tried to get people to recycle How the long trash. Twenty ten. But did it? Didn't work. But it, it didn't work. People just wouldn't do it. They but just, you know what? Even with the, I have to honestly tell you, we had lids for yeah. the blue cans. We specifically ordered lids for the blue cans, and it still didn't. Work. So it just didn't well, work. It just doesn't I never, work. I never got any lids. No, 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 because yeah. that. Well, I wasn't. Yeah. You know, but so people still combine the they trash. They still do it. It's just, yeah. it's such a, it's a difficult process. I've tried, I, I don't, well, I mean, yeah, there, it's not no broken. No there is no easy solution. I'll be happy to get you lit if I have yeah. a lot of work. Well, I'm not very much, so. Do you think part of the problem, though, was <laughs> the, the, were you guys emptying them? Regularly, or? Oh, yeah, we have to have night. We have to have night. We have to have curve, but then, if there was a little bit of trash in there, they wouldn't take recyclers. Uh, it's so they would just put every time they just put it in the hot dogs, whatever. There's people that care. There are. There are people that care. A lot of it is the kids that are hanging, which is fine. That's true. As long as they clean up after themselves. They don't. And that's an issue. Thank you, Craig. Yeah, that's a 
That's uh, no one else. Is there a motion to close the public portion? Second. I second. second. All in favor? Without the portion closed, do I have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion. Second. I second it. All in favor?